This program was recorded on Monday, November 17th, in the year of our Lord, 2016. The opinions expressed by the participants in the following program do not necessarily represent that of this station or its management. Or anyone else. <laughs> From the John DeVita Recording Studio, located in an undisclosed and clandestine location on the great northwest side of our fair city of Chicago, we once again are pleased to be presenting yet another edition of our monthly roundtable panel discussion show, Meet the Chicago Historians. Now here's the guy who started it all, John DeVita. Well, thank you very much, Rich. From the John DeVita Broadcast Center, ladies, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another broadcast of Meet the Chicago Historians on the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network on Monday, October the 17th, the year of our Lord, 2016. Today, the panel will be talking about Chicago elections, the great and the odd. So sit back and enjoy Meet the Chicago Historians. And now to start today's broadcast, here's our announcer, Mr. Richard Lang. And now here's our panel moderator, Jack Red Ryan. Jack? What's that guy doing with that rope over there? <laughs> hey, everybody. Such a beautiful day today. You'd swear this was maybe May or June. You know, August, late August. Or so beautiful. And... Uh, uh, it is uh, definitely autumn. You can tell the difference. The leaves are turning so beautiful right now. And uh, uh, before we know it, it's going to be Thanksgiving, and the year will be out. Oh well, oh well. another year gone. <laughs> that sounded like a downer, didn't it? Sorry. Yeah. Anyway, uh, welcome, and we're glad to uh, both of you who are listening out there, or whoever are listening. <laughs> we, we know we enjoy our, our getting together like this, and uh, we. Uh, uh, we'll get to talk about a few current events first before we get on to that topic. And we're going to do our Mouseketeer roll call, starting with Annette Funicello, Mick Bobby Key Burgess, Mouse Club, Cubby O'Brien, and the brand that's made and for Ken you Little and me. And, uh, M -I -C in the Fire Alarm Office taught uh, at uh, Wright College, and uh, mm -hmm. I consider myself a Chicago historian, but there's so much of interest in Chicago. The learning never stops. True. Not, not really. Not really. Yeah, Chicago never stops either. It never ceases to amaze us, does it? Yeah. M <laughs> remember, it reminds me of the uh, the um, movie that was made. Wow. About uh, the city that never sleeps. Does anybody remember that? Gig Young as a police yeah, officer. Yeah, I just, uh, I have a, that actually. You know, yeah, Joe mm -hmm. Will. He's a, a policeman at, 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 at the crossroads of his life. Yes. Exactly. I'm not going to fill him, but it's, that's a good picture. It's State a good Madison, picture. or I mean, what? what huh? State Madison, or? <laughs> crossroads of his life. Yeah. Yeah. All you coppers at the crossroads oh. of your life? Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm rapidly approaching the crossroads <laughs> of my life. <laughs> I can, I can, I'm not there, but I can see it Which from, my, from my position. It's a four way I can't wait to get through that intersection. <laughs> <laughs> No, that, that, that's a great picture. It's also done by Republic Pictures, mm -hmm. who's known for their westerns and their serials. Yeah. And that's and one of the major pictures they did with, like, The Quiet Man was one of them. Yeah. And, uh, but this one had a great cast, Gig Young and Mella Powers. And mm. uh, Edward Arnold was in it. Yeah. Uh, Chill and, uh, Wills. Chill Wills, yeah. He was the sergeant. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Don't give it any more. And then they filmed part of that, the exterior over at Ma Old Maxwell. Oh, where, which was there. later used as the exterior for Hill Street. Hill Street. Yeah, Blue right. yeah. Chill Wills, and he's not a cowboy. I don't know if no, I, I don't think I've ever seen a movie with <laughs> Chill Wills, when he w w which wasn't a western. <laughs> he became yeah. Gig Young's partner, and <laughs> okay. uh, he was a sergeant. And he was in charge, and uh, yeah. and they they uh, they they used some very authentic uh, Chicago locations on the radio, you know. Yeah. And uh, you know. You got a person down, uh, you know, Huron between Sedgwick and, you know, Hudson and stuff like that. Well, that well, was before the projects, too, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Well, I was, think it was uh, shot around, I don't know, 40, 54. 54. Yeah. So you don't see mountains in the background as you do in no. sometimes when it's supposed to be in Chicago <laughs> and you can see mountains. And yeah, there's some mammoths. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. good to see a movie about Chicago that didn't have Al Capone in it. Yeah. 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 What was the name of that movie again? I'm... City, city, that that never never sleeps. Sleeps. city that never sleeps. City that never sleeps. Yeah, yeah it's good. Yeah. Thank you. It's good. That's a new one. Yeah. But, uh, 
Anyway, it's 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 a kind of a cross between a noir and a kind of a, like a Frank Capra. Oh, okay. In a way, you know, yeah. it's one of those film oh. noyers. Noyer. Yeah, <laughs> noyers. Film noyer. Yeah. <laughs> wherever <laughs> that wherever that word came from, I'm I don't know. Glad you mentioned that. That's yeah. Uh, well, well, the I other one, the other really good Chicago-based movie based on the true story was called Northside Seven Seven. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's yeah. Jimmy Stewart. Jimmy yeah. Stewart. Yeah. Just uh, <laughs> very good. <laughs> Yeah. Just a classic. Jimmy Stewart and uh, Lee J. Cobb was it? Lee J. Cobb was the uh, yeah. uh, is editor. Editor. He's always good. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Lee J. Cobb's a good actor. Let's see. Cool. Richard that's, Conti. That's Richard one Conti. That's one history. Right. Yeah. yeah. And there was. Um, let me think now. Well, there's a lot of a lot of your lesser name. You know, we don't know these names. Uh, uh, you know, is Ma- John, isn't John McIntyre in that? No, E.J. E. Yeah. Marshall played. No, he's in no. Mar- G. I think John McIntyre. He's on the parole board, I oh, think. Oh, yes, he John is Mar- in there. Yeah, uh, uh, e. John McIntyre at the end of the film. He's oh, he's e. the guy that says, e. we've got to get going he's here. He's from we, the we state's attorney's office. He doesn't want to wait as they're trying yeah. to get right. that blow-up of the photograph. Yeah. And yeah. 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 There's you a know, couple of... You know, one, one of the reasons that the film industry stopped filming in the city of Chicago was the the original Mayor Daley. Didn't want yeah. Yeah. He didn't, didn't because want police. Because he thought, no. he thought that the, the city would be shown in a negative light. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there were all kinds of, I mean, well, if, after him and his son got through with their, their reign, you can see there mm-hmm. there's a, a huge uh, movie production company right over, right just behind, uh, behind uh, Mount Sinai Hospital. Enormous. Uh, and they're filming uh, you know, yeah. Chicago PD, Chicago Fire. There's a new Chicago uh, Med. Yeah, there's well, a one new, of our new, new one coming out. Well, Chicago Legal uh, or APB, I think. Yeah. Lee Marvin talked about all the grief that he got from the Chicago authorities and the police department yeah. when they were doing M Squad, and they yeah. they thought they were going to do for Chicago what Dragnet had done for right. L.A. Yeah. And the city daily wanted no part of it. They they would they would yeah. harass their production crews and yeah. uh, you know what? That's a typical politician. Mm-hmm. He's afraid. Yeah. Afraid of exposure. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, one of our guys. Who was who was the guy? Who was John? Yes. Who was the guy? Uh, he was down here for a while, and he had been in the pictures, and uh, he was a makeup artist. He lives locally. Tom, uh, was Mike. Uh, Mike, 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 he you know, wrote a book, too. Yeah. Italian. Yeah, uh, anyway, he was saying that uh, all kinds of pressure was put on him uh, not to um, not to film here, now even. And, and I remember hearing about, like, right around the time we came on the job, Tom, they filmed Gailey Gailey here. It was kind of semi-autobiographical of Ben Hecht. And they were like, they after a while they left and finished the shooting in Milwaukee because right. it was all the... Uh, Pressure was put on them. Mike Baccarella. For a long time, hardly yeah. anything. Mike Baccarella, that was the guy in Chicago. Yeah. 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 Television or movies. Yeah, there yeah. was just yeah. very yeah. little done here in because Chicago. Because the old, uh, was the old, was it the old Ryerson Steel is now set up as studios out there and they haven't hardly been using them? That's. Is yeah, it Ryerson? Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, on, the, on the west side? S- yeah, 16th and whatever. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's right, uh-huh. right, right behind uh, Mount Sinai Hospital. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. You did mention it. Yeah. I know uh, filmmakers like the uh, the different neighborhoods and looks of the place. They oh, sure. they've done some of those superhero pictures and like uh, they use they like to use lower whacker because has a dark look oh, to it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you don't know it's out. It's dark, lower. So that that over there is was ri- rice and steel. Yeah, and that's uh, NBC Universal is does uh, has that uh, over there, and that's where they do all their cinema. Cinema Studios has got yeah. those yeah. buildings over there. And that's where they do, uh, like Tom says, Chicago f- uh, Fires, or Chicago PD, uh, Chicago Med. And there was another one that they were building uh, when we went through there, and I can't remember the name of it. Uh, but uh, the fire commissioner, uh, uh, Commissioner Santiago, when the 511 cl- Club was 60 years old, he arranged it for us to go through a, a tour. Uh, of the, of the, all the, all those studios in there, so uh, Dennis Aarons and myself and members of the 511 Club, we sat in the chair where Chief Bowden sits. I was, I stood behind the, the counter where the uh, where the uh, cop uh, uh, the sergeant is, and and in that jail they have in the, out in there in, in in the yards out there, and I went through that whole entire and it's very very interesting. Yeah. But it's uh, yeah, like Tom says, around 16th and Campbell or somewhere in there. Yeah, in there. It's it's the old Rise and Steel. There's about three or four big buildings there, and they are they're blocks long. Yeah. And uh, of course, we had uh, during the Byrne administration, Blues Brothers was yeah. here. Yeah. 
They shot yeah. the Blues Brothers, a lot of it anyway. I'll never forget, you know, I was working at City Hall there on the sixth <laughs> floor. And it's a Sunday, very quiet, nothing happened. All of a sudden I'm looking out. You can see just a little stretch of the elevated tracks. There was an automobile up there. <laughs> I mean, does anybody remember the scene? They somehow got an automobile up on the L tracks, and yeah. they were chasing it, or somebody was chasing. Did you think he was hallucinating? Yeah, or? right. No, yeah. I. It's it's unbelievable what these movie companies uh, spend and and, oh, and their yeah. their thoughts when they were doing backdraft here i was assigned to that's that. right yeah mm -hmm. and uh like like chick is now with chicago fire but um uh, they were going to do the the scene at the cemetery and we have really we have our memorial statue there and we have a memorial service every year and so forth and uh, that statue is one of a kind. Yeah. And so I had uh, uh, 110 the truck and that go over and clean up all of the goose crap off the, you know, <laughs> off the monument so it looked decent. They picked it up. I went to back to Ron Howard and I said, we're all set for over there. He says, oh, no, we're going to do it over and uh, <laughs> we already have a spot yeah. over at... Uh, I keep calling it Waveland. Uh, you mean like Lincoln Park on, on or Clark and and uh, that oh, cemetery? Oh, Graceland. 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 Yeah. Graceland. And I said, well, but our but our monument is at Rose Hill. <laughs> no, we're going to do it at Graceland. <laughs> <laughs> said, okay. Yeah. They spend fifty thousand dollars to create a monument, uh, kind of to match our real yeah. one in that. They could have had and, the real one. And all yeah. of that, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, one of the guys said, no, we're going to do it there. Well, when it was all over, I asked Ron, I said, well, what are you going to do with that? I was going to take it and, you know, use it over in the in the union office. <laughs> we, we had that big garage there. Oh, he said, yeah, you can have that. Go ahead and have it. Well, the next day it rained. <laughs> <laughs> and that thing was made out of paper mache. Oh, and it was just one true. big blob. Yeah. By the oh. time, but but they, and they they think nothing of oh, yeah. spending money and no. you know, uh, pocket well, change. Yeah. yeah, our next contestant. Yeah, next. Yeah, come on, Tom. Come in and sign in, please. <laughs> Tom McKenna, uh, retired Chicago police. And you you were in backdraft. Uh, yes, I was. Uh, we were in the funeral scene. That's why I still played with the uh, mm. uh, Emerald Society pipe band. Oh, mm -hmm. And uh, also a lifelong friend of our moderator. Uh, and one of the few people that will actually admit to that. Admit to it, yeah. <laughs> I remember one of your, your quotes about that. You guys were standing, you know, the band was there, and uh, Ron Howard, the director, walked by, and you said, Hey, Ron, what's my motivation? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Everybody's a comedian. Yeah. <laughs> I guess he's never heard that one. Every, huh? No. <laughs> Everybody uh, wants to get into so, the act. Uh, next up, we have on uh, Rich, you've heard from me already. I'm your announcer, Rich Lang. I have a background in uh, history. Mm -hmm student of Ken Little's Chicago history class at Wright College. I did a little teaching of modern American and European history <coughs> at a mm -hmm. distinguished college in Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm now active in a group that recreates old-time radio shows. You've done anything lately? Or? Uh, not so much lately, but we're booked to do in about a month. Of course, who's on first? Oh, yeah. oh. The classic radio yeah. bit. Yeah. Who's on first? What's on first? I don't know. What? What? <laughs> I don't know. Third, Third base. base. <laughs> 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 now that's they, they said that's an old, old burlesque routine, yep. which was, of course, made famous by Evan Costello because they get it on, on film and on the radio. Yeah. And there is no, there is no script to it no. because it's all how the, how the, uh, the straight man leads you around. There's all kinds of variations, yeah. a similar right. script. Yeah. Yeah. They, just yeah. 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 they, they, they did it. There's variations in the Evan and Costello Very much performances. Yeah. 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 He yeah. says on t TV, he says he doesn't give a darn, but he actually goes, I don't give a damn. Well, <laughs> yeah. I don't that. Mm -hmm. can't, you can't talk like that, right? No. Not real real people don't talk that way. No. Hey, Clark Gable did. Yeah. Well, you know, that was right. that was Only to once, though. Wasn't that supposed to be shocking when he said that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, had, they had a great deal of discussion as to whether or not he would use the, yeah. that, that word. Yeah. The, one, the alternative was, frankly, frankly, my dear, I just don't care. Yeah. That was oh, the alternative. Yeah. That was Zero. They, the they decided that was flat, yeah. and they went with. Yeah. I give a rat's ass. Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think that was one of the alternatives. <laughs> no. I, I, no. I don't think David Selznick <laughs> had that as one of the options. <laughs> you know. But uh, 
Anyway, what movie was that in? Was it The Wizard of Oz? Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> wasn't that? Was that in Backtrack? No, maybe it was. Uh, um, City that oh, never sleeps. Gidget goes Hawaiian. That's that, that, was it, that was it. Yeah. yeah. He said it. And the next De up Debra we have Deborah Wally to the. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And I'm John S. Kachoko, and I was in politics and government for a number of years as a state representative, town official, and had the pleasure of being part of the old WJJG radio broadcasting uh, experience, and glad to be here with Meet the Chicago Historians. Of which this group is really an outgrowth. It's a spinoff. Yeah, we are, yeah, we are, so what, we are what, continuing what the tradition. What Hollywood call a spinoff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm dizzy. I'm being <laughs> spun. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. And I'm Bill Kugelman with the uh, Fire Museum of Greater Chicago now. I spent uh, 46 years in the Chicago Fire Department, retired as a chief, and uh, then went on to be president of the union. And uh, was very proud of the things that we did. Uh, uh, I, uh, I, too, am very proud to be here. Uh, in the spin-off from Cop Talk, I guess you would say, too. Yeah. And uh, uh, I, uh, oh, I do have something here. Uh, the Fire Museum of Greater Chicago at 5218 Southwestern Avenue this coming Saturday. We'll have an open house from 10 until 2, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, everybody's welcome. Bring a camera. Uh, bring the kids, and uh, we will uh, show you what it was like in the good old days. The good old days. Good old days. Are you getting good turnouts for those open houses? Yes, or? yes, they have been good. I keep telling my daughter and son-in-law, you know, let's do it, let's do it. Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, Bill, if you're going to recreate the good old days, you better br bring some beer. Oh, oh. boy. <laughs> Well, we don't have donuts, though. <laughs> let's let's <laughs> recreate the good old days and uh, set off the sirens if the Cubs get to the World Series. There you yeah. go. <laughs> Absolutely. That would be a good recreation. old Robert J. Quinn. Now, that was a reference to 1959 and uh, uh, September 22nd for all you out there listening and all you kids in school were long before, really prehistoric for you. But in Cleveland, when the Sox, Cleveland, White Sox in 59, beat the Cleveland Indians to eliminate them before there was divisional play, by the way. Either you won the pennant or you didn't, right? In Cleveland. Right. In, in Cleveland, Cleveland, on the road, Jack Brickhouse and uh, Lou Boudreau did the game. And uh, all of a sudden, the Sox won and the sirens went off. Well, those who were following baseball kind of figured it out. <laughs> this but is at the height of the Cold hell of a lot War. Of people, <laughs> didn't it? Yeah, people it who was about 11.30 at yeah. night People who weren't so. baseball fans yeah. thought was, that yeah. there was a yeah. Soviet I was, attack. I was listening, <laughs> and I went outside, and you know, what the hell is... <laughs> yeah. The people across the street, you know. I understand, like, uh, Bill Boyd was our explorer advisor. He said some family in their neighborhood, he lived in Austin, they were down in the basement saying the rosary. So, <laughs> of course, that Irish family probably didn't. That's right because anyway. they were Indians fans. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, yeah. Well, Don't listen. If yeah. the Cubs do it this year, who knows? Yeah. Those sirens uh, may go off again. Who yeah. knows? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, you know, I can say this objectively, and uh, I'm not a Cubs fan. I I think they're going to do it. It just looks like they have everything going there. Yeah. They're, they love what they're doing. They can't wait to get to the next game. Yeah. Everybody contributes. Am I, am I wrong? What do you think, Tom? Great. I, I couldn't agree more. All, yeah. the, uh, all the planets are aligned properly. Yeah. 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 Every, every, so. hundred, every 108 years, yeah. <laughs> something like that happens. Yeah. Neptune I is in right. <laughs> conjunction right. with Pluto. Right. So, uh, no, I, it sounds I like the dawning of the age of Aquarius. Or something. Yeah, I but, tell uh, you what, when, when they won the other day, when they won the last time they won this area to go into the championship, I the first thing I thought of is, am I glad I'm not a copper working over in Wrigley? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Time. Oh, my God. It had to be a riot. A pinch hit grand slammer. Yeah. yeah. How's that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, if the Cubs win, they could fire off a 21-gun salute, but the trouble is you couldn't tell any difference from an ordinary night in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> right. There's all kinds of salutes, <laughs> salutes every week there in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What oh. do we have this week, this last weekend? What do we have, 48 shootings and <laughs> eight killings? Oh. Yeah, Probably yeah I think so. Something like that. And there was some snide... It's, 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 uh, it's unbelievable. If that, if that happened 
almost anywhere else, you know, did it be all big, it'd big, be all news. Any of what we talk yeah. about. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now you look at it's it, just, it go, just routine. Oh, uh, yeah, just, yeah. Seven more dead. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Uh, yeah. Nice, nice weather we're having. <laughs> yeah, all right. I mean, yeah. it's like you, you become... Yeah, look at the yeah, new fashions. Immune to it. Yeah. Yeah. I, immune to it. Immune, yeah. Yeah. I what was say that Sh what was the Los Angeles Times made a comment, that, you know, going back to, to the Tribune. They're both owned by the Tribune. Tribune so yeah. like, hey, how many uh, people got shot over the weekend? You know, that's, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's their comment about Chicago. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was in New York City, and the coppers in New York mm -hmm. City. The one guy said that's what the first thing they do in the morning. See how many people got shot and killed in Chicago. Yeah, mm -hmm. makes it, them feel better. Yeah, I was yeah. just gonna say, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And why ultimately the difference between us, uh, L.A. and <laughs> New York? Maybe the gang structure is so much heavier here. That's got to be part of it. Well, the well the 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 in New York City, the demographics have changed so much, especially in Manhattan. I mean, from the, I hadn't been there in years, and. Uh, you know, people, you know, well-educated people that make a uh, a high salary d just aren't in the habit of shooting one another. Mm. And and I think you have to give credit to to a great mayor, Rudy Giuliani, who yeah. cleaned who that city was a right. disaster before yeah. he became mayor. He cleaned it up with tough policies. Yeah. Bloomberg, to his credit, I'm not a fan of everything Bloomberg did, but to his credit, he, Bloomberg continued, continued Giuliani's it, yeah. programs as far as the yeah. police. Yeah, and and uh, that was a dramatic change in New York. Yeah. Juliana did a great job yeah. at that yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Comrade De Blasio, <laughs> well, yeah. it's a different yeah. story. The the, the, pre the the preventive sort of proactive work that you do as a cop is the very thing that they're beefing about now. Making stops and yeah. the word yeah. uh, what is it? Uh, what's the word we're using? Profiling now. Yeah. Yeah. That's the new police brutality. You have. Yeah. But everybody profiles. Everybody yeah, sizes absolutely. someone up. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Cornerstone of police work. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and they also make it sound as if the term. And I wrote something about this recently. I was writing for the Southwest News Journal. The term uh, stop and frisk. It's not a new. That's been around for yeah. many years, and courts have upheld forever. Yeah. 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 Upheld that that was a, a legitimate uh, uh, function of the police to. You s depending on the obviously the circumstance, let's like said, uh, broad daylight, one thing. Uh, mm -hmm. If there's a bunch of kids walk out of an alley at two in the morning, uh, you're, you're bound to check them out. You're around here. What are you doing out here? Yeah, are you sure. Of age, you know, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. It's got to be a yeah. snap judgment. Have right. On the spot. Even Marshall Dillon did it. Well, they didn't get many anybody hmm. messing with people like that. You know, questioning them. No, it's not even Chester. The stop and frisk yes, thing is uh, something that should be happening, and uh, uh, it, uh, you 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 did say it right. It's like a dirty word anymore. Yeah, Jack, no. yeah. And you know the 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 people that are in favor of aggressive police procedures are the people that live in those areas in the or high all crime areas. Sure, right. yeah. So John and I, yeah. to any police officer, will tell you in these high crime areas. When we when we were there, I mean, if I had a dollar for every person that came up to me and said, "Glad to see you around here, officer. Yeah. Come around here more. Yeah. It's terrible out here. Well, I can't walk out my front door. We yeah. we like to see you. Absolutely. I mean, I'd be able to take a nice vacation somewhere. Yeah. They liked us. So all this this uh, media negativity about the police department it just doesn't exist, yeah. and it's very frustrating to police officers because they're constantly bombarded with this negative image, but when they actually go into the neighborhoods and these areas, these high crime areas, the police get along very well mm -hmm. yeah. with the uh, citizens, the, yeah. the law abiding citizens. Yeah. Right. They yeah. don't get along with the gang bangers. Yeah. And they never talk to the law abiding people. Those who are victimized all the time. I don't They're know what, uh, what you guys think of this uh, new uh, superintendent, but uh, I was very pleased to see him after this uh, uh, female uh, copper was was uh, uh, harassed and, and uh, brutalized, put her in a, a concussion, a, a concussion yeah. and put her in the hospital, about what he said about uh, yeah. why she yeah. did not shoot the guy. Yeah. She was yeah. afraid if she used the firearm, she would get into trouble, and yeah. she, she was yeah. concerned yeah. about herself and her yeah. family and all That's the grief right. she would get. So yeah. now she wound up severely yeah, severely. yeah she may never come yes. back on yeah. that job yeah. yeah it's a shame yeah no he uh, he did a good job there uh, uh bringing that up 
Yeah. And in the way he brought it up. I like cool. everything he's done. Yeah. Truthfully, I'm not a, you know, I'm sort of neutral. Like, but I, like I said, with the news media, you know, it's, it's, it's frustrating to be dictated to by people that have absolutely no idea what they're talking about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. These people, they've, they've never lived in a black neighborhood. They've never worked no. in a black area. They have nothing to do with, uh, you know, uh, uh, any, any, anything related to what they're talking about, but they, but they, constantly talk about it like they actually know what they're doing. And it's spreading out of those neighborhoods. Right. And like too, I say, wh- while while police officers are being bad mouthed, as those people are bad mouthing them, there are white police officers in black communities having a very positive interaction sure. with one another. Yeah. And it so. is totally and completely <coughs> ignored. Yeah. That's yeah, the media. They don't they're right, they talk don't, about that. Right, yeah, don't confuse me with the facts. No. That doesn't you know, sell my, papers. Yeah, my, yeah. my mind is made up. White police officers yeah. are racist. And as they are spouting these falsehoods, white police officers are interacting with black people positively. Yeah. Do sure. you know anybody sitting around who might have done that ever? Yeah. <laughs> Yourself, maybe? You know, I mean, it, it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's, it just uh, it does such a disservice. You know, I mean, if uh, talk about racist police officers. If they were truly racist, what are they doing working in a black area serving the black community? Yeah. I mean, if they were racist, do you think they'd be there? No. They're, they're no, there to do it. Out to out do it. To do a job. Yeah. And 80% and the of the calls or something aren't even police matters. Right. That's why, you know, service. The police officer has a few seconds to make a decision mm-hmm. that the reporters and the lawyers and the politicians have weeks to analyze. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> the know. thing, the 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 thing that I bring yeah. up, right, the, right. the incident in Ferguson, if anyone should have been indicted in that incident, it should have been the members of the news media. <laughs> because... Every single thing that they reported in their original report was wrong. Was wrong. Was wrong. <laughs> Every single right. thing yeah. was wrong. Yeah. The, the only thing that was true was the, that the gentle giant and the police officer were in the same place at the same time. Yeah. But other than that, there was no, nothing even resembling the truth. But they sold it. They sold it to the, to the, uh, uh, the public and the public bought it. But I think, you know, I think it's also true if you're a reporter, you know what's going to happen to your career if you report the story that doesn't coincide with the official the official interpretation right. of it. If you actually report what happened, you're gonna, your career is going to be sidelined because your editor is not going to want the story that you hand in. So a good, good example of what you were just talking about was the, um, uh, with the Trayvon Martin and what was, the, what was his name, the accused or the... Uh, yeah. The atta- he was actually the victim. Darren. Uh, anyway, yeah. um, the good th- thing there was when he called 911, the dispatcher yeah. asked him a description yeah. and said, what color is he? And he says, he's black. Well, the one station edited a- out, they're asking him that, yeah. as NBC. if he were just offering this on his own, yeah. Yeah. as if this were a reason yeah. that he should. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they t- edited kind of that him. part out Remember to that? make it appear yeah. that he initiated do, yes. the, race, yeah. the race aspect yeah. of it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I can't, I can't think of his name now, but yeah, yeah. yeah plus, the, that's unique about the United States because in most countries that have state-run uh, propaganda machines, like we do, <laughs> uh, <laughs> they speak positively about public officials. We're we're the only one that has a state-run media and speaks negatively about about, about police. police. Right. Yeah, if yeah. depending on which ones you are, on which which side of the fence. Tom, I'm glad you uh, brought that. Uh, uh, sign from New York that uh, that I think should now go out to every police vehicle in the city of Chicago that there's a $20,000 reward for anyone that shoots at a Chicago police uh, officer and uh, it's, it's certainly helped in New York for the last or 30 I, years. I agree. That, that's what yeah, I tell yeah. people. I said if, if somebody is going to shoot at a uniformed officer or someone that they know, in fact, is a police officer, with total disregard and disrespect, what do you think they're going to do to you? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I yeah. mean, if they have absolutely no respect <coughs> for a uniformed <coughs> officer. Who's what, carrying yeah, a firearm. Yeah, right. What, yeah, what yeah, yeah think, right. Yeah. What, what do you think is going to happen when, they, when you get in a confrontation with them? Yeah. Well, the, the thing with this, too, is 
uh, money talks, mm. and and when when somebody sees that twenty thousand dollars or ten thousand in New York, uh, they're they're liable to come up with the information, positive information, and 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 do it. We've already given uh, twenty thousand to the person that that uh, told us about the guy that shot Mike Flix, Flisk. And uh, you didn't see anything about it in the paper or anything, you know. People don't know about these things, and yeah. these are things that should be yeah. should be out there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Now for a brief intermission. You've been listening to Meet the Chicago Historians. We'll be right back. Friends, are you looking for a place to have some printing done? Well, I have the right place for you to go, and that is the printing store in Oak Park, Illinois. Call or see Phil Berry at 621 Madison Street in Oak Park, Illinois, or call 708-383-3638. Phil will sit down with you and help you plan whatever you need printed. Now his products are brochures, booklets, business cards, catalogs, envelopes, letterheads, flyers, invitations, newsletters, notepads, menus, mailers, manuals, labels, posters, postcards, price lists, NCR forms, cell sheets, table tents, pocket folders, and presentation forms. And his services include one to four color offset printing, digital copying, high speed copying, graphic designs, typesetting, laminating, foil stamping, die cutting, and imprinting. And he also has a complete binary service which includes booklets, cutting, scoring, folding, numbering, padding, and drilling. So once again, for all your printing needs, See or call Phil Berry at the printing store at 621 Madison Street in Oak Park, Illinois, or call 708-383-3638. And once again, they are located at Madison Street and Clarence Avenue, just east of Oak Park Avenue. And it's at 621 Madison Street in Oak Park, or call 708-383-3638. And ask to speak to. <laughs> hey, we're. We're coming back now, everybody. We, we had a little a little recess here, and the guys were out playing on the swings and teeter totters, like we used to in a recess at one time, and uh, back in the recesses of our mind. So, anyway, where were we? You have a mind oh, I, that has a recess. I I there? haven't introduced myself yet. Yeah. Do I have to? Here yeah. we go. Get your boots on, fellas. <laughs> uh, of so. No. Yeah, I'm Jack Ryan, uh, John Ryan, Red Ryan, whichever you wish to call me, and. Uh, sort of through attrition, I came to this role. Here I am now. I feel yeah. kind of like Harry Truman did, I suppose. You know, the, the weight of the world was on my shoulders. Really? Yeah. 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 I didn't know that. Well, the weight of John's house, anyway. Oh, okay. That's almost as much. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, anyway, uh, I, I like Tom McKenna, my good friend, since we're like seven years old. I was uh, uh, on the police department for about the same amount of time, about 34 years, and... Uh, also did a little uh, union organizing. Uh, we tried to get a, a real union in, and we wound up with the Fraternal Order of Police uh, as a representative instead. Mm -hmm. However, uh, our good friend Joe Mescal, uh, uh, who's now had a, suffered a terrible accident, is written up at home and uh, 
really isn't going anywhere. He's uh, had a bad fall last March. Uh, he was the one who really is responsible for having any any uh, representation at all, any contract. So he'll probably never get any recognition for it, but nonetheless. Anyway, I worked for them. I also did a little bit of the, um, during that time, I did our newsletter. So I was the editor, writer, photographer, cartoonist, and we didn't accept any advertising. So Publisher. Mm. Publisher, well, yeah. We, we couldn't, not even in our Sunday edition. And uh, what else did I do, Tom? Anything? I did a little wrestling, yeah, pro wrestling. Professional yeah. wrestling career? Yeah. Your professional wrestling career? Yeah, I did a little uh, wrestling. I was one of those guys, you know, for about seven years part-time. I know we had a new commander come in when I was working in Chicago Lawn. John Corliss had been the commander, and he was replaced by, um, keep forgetting the guy's name. <laughs> Shame, you know. Barney Miller. Are you talking about... Uh, Probably not. Uh, yeah, I'll think of his name about... Hollinsworth. Yep, yeah, right. James Hollinsworth. Right. Oh, okay. Anyway, he was came from the youth division, and, and he says to me one day, Oh, I hear you did some pro wrestling, huh? Uh, what, what, was your, what was your name? What did you weigh? What did you wrestle? And he says, Is, is that stuff on the legit or what? And <laughs> I said, Well, put it to you this way, Commander. It's the second phonies profession I was ever <laughs> associated with. And he says... Was the first, <laughs> and it was was serious. So, yeah. anyway, some people are that away. I was just making it funny. Come on, laugh, guys. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that in uh, what was it uh, with Jack Lemon and the Great Race, where the one prince would raise uh, his hand yeah. and then <laughs> down they go. <laughs> anyway, that's kind of like it was. Wasn't that the way it was with Stalin? Uh, oh yes. yeah. They, yeah. They, they were afraid yeah. not to. Why does the applause? chicken cross the road yeah. to yeah. get to the other the side? side. Oh, 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 yeah. me. No, I mean, no, I mean seriously, w they were afraid to quit <laughs> applauding when he was on. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was terrible. I mean, yeah. he would he would keep them up all night watching American cowboy movies. And he would <laughs> comment on how politically wrong these were because the bankers and the ranchers <laughs> were good guys and, you know, they're supposed to be the... But next night, they said there'd be another cowboy movie. And that's yeah. that's that was... And they'd have to sit up till 3, 4 in the morning after having consumed huge quantities <laughs> of vodka, vodka, and they had to stay awake, you know. Mm. God help you if, if, you, if you dozed off. And yeah. Yeah. Oh, they were well trained. <laughs> well yeah. they had and they would stagger home to their, to their own doc. <laughs> this is like Khrushchev and Molotov and the rest of them. They would, you know, they would so be driven home at 4.30 in the morning. So do, do you think Molotov had a few cocktails? Then, or <laughs> I think oh. he may have, yeah. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. Boom. It's Ooh. funny, I understand at one time Stalin was a bank robber over the... Uh, I think it's very, yeah, when you know. he was very, very young revolutionary. Yeah, Stalin yeah. wasn't his name either. No. No. It's Jugashvili. Yeah, Joseph. He's Georgian. He's Georgian. Joseph Vissarionovich, son of Vissarion, Jugashvili. Ah. He changed his name to Stalin, which means full of steel. Man of steel. Like yeah. yeah. And Time, Mag Time Magazine oh. actually called him the Man of Steel in the 30s before Superman had been created. Yeah. Oh. You will see that reference yeah. in, in yeah. Time Magazine. Yeah. They called him the Man of yeah. Steel. Yeah. Some of them said that Jugash Vili meant Man of Jugash. Oh. <laughs> that's, why, that's why he didn't want to use didn't want to use that term. That's like Dracula. <laughs> he was from the town of Lugos. <laughs> there was oh, Bela yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right, right, yeah. I don't know what his real name yeah. was. Be I think it was Bella, but... Uh, yeah. Kind of like uh, uh, Luca Brasi from Luca. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Wait, this. There's, but, a, uh, there's a joke about Stalin. He's reviewing the troops in Red Square, and there's a sneeze. And he stops, and he says, who sneezed? <laughs> Dead silence. Who sneezed? Bring up the firing squad. Shoot down the first rank. So they mow down the first rank. <laughs> who sneezed? <laughs> Still nothing. Shoot down the second rank. They shoot down the second rank. Stalin says, maybe now the man who sneezed will admit it. <laughs> so from the last row, <laughs> the hand, it, it was I, Comrade Marshal Stalin, it was I who sneezed. And Stalin says, aha, Gesundheit. <laughs> <laughs> well, the one Reagan told about uh, Castro was giving one of his really long-winded speeches for a couple hours in an auditorium. All of a sudden, here's a vendor come through. Popcorn, peanuts, popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> it's just quiet. Does it again. Same thing happens. Popcorn, peanuts, popcorn, peanuts. Looks around. 
one more time. He starts popcorn and peanuts. He says, "If I catch whoever it is who's yelling popcorn and peanuts, I'll kick their ass all the way to Miami." Everybody in the audience goes, "Popcorn and peanuts." <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that was like when Adlai Stevenson he was giving a speech outdoors at uh, Northwestern University, and he took the speech out of his packet as he walked up to the podium. If, do you remember this? And it was maybe ten pages long, and about four or five pages blew, blew off the podium and blew. Uh, the wind really took it. And he looks, he goes, well, I guess that's a break for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like him, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> and, and there was the story, uh, uh, Everett Dirksen was on the podium, and mm. Stevenson was governor at the time here in L.A. Stevenson, and um, he's, he notices behind him, st uh, he's making some point in his speech, and he notices Stevenson's talking to someone. So he turns and says, isn't that right, governor? You go, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's <not> <laughs> 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 What did Harry Truman say about Stevenson? When he Stevenson, by the way, oh, yeah. for you young folks, he was the Democratic st standard bearer in 1952 and 1956. In 52, he had John Sparkman from Alabama, senator, as his running mate. And he <coughs> had, uh, in 56, it was Estes Kefauver, right. senator from Tennessee, who was head of that big committee in, on organized crime. That's where he got his... Anyway, yeah. uh, well, when Truman met him, he made <laughs> the comment... He ain't much different than a regular sissy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Truman was kind of known for being yeah. kind of blunt, wasn't Rather he? Rather blunt yeah. those things. Yeah. You know what, though? Everything he said sort of <laughs> made sense, though, you know? Yeah, yeah that's why. Uh, uh, yeah, the buck stops here. The all buck, oh, yeah. He yeah. had common yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that what... Uh, Which is lost. Isn't that how, why uh, Trump won his, won his, uh, his uh, primary over everybody else? Speaking plainly? Yeah. But nobody else seems yep. to want to do up there? Yep. Yeah. What, what's on people's mind, really? That's yeah. what why Rush Limbaugh has been so successful because he's saying what we right. yeah, think and the, and the mainstream media can't figure it out yeah. Yeah. they just can't yeah. they just cannot figure it out as I said earlier that because they don't go anywhere where the average person no. they, they don't they, they live in their own little cool. little yeah. subculture yeah. you know and and everything everyone thinks the same way you know they just can't believe it's like uh, you know what did Hillary say? I can't well, believe why I'm not winning by... Yeah, by 50%. Yeah. Yeah. Or something. 50 she, she points. She yeah, should she be, I should yeah. be winning by yeah, 50 she points. She can't get it. That's the real her, by the way. Yeah. Uh, and the people in the media took the way they think. We should be conforming with them. Not vice. They shouldn't be listening to us. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We, we commoners, we what? What are we... What are we, would you call it? Uh, serfs or what? What do they call us? Come on, come on, the words. Peons. Pe 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 that's the word. Peon. You peon. Yes, you, 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 uh, oh, well. Uh, <laughs> let, the, let the listeners. Yeah, uh, there a whole bunch of words yes. like that. You, yeah. you. They'll figure it out. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, where were we? Harry Truman. Harry okay, getting Truman. back to it. Okay, we're talking about a little uh, Chicago elections. You want to get into that a little bit? Any, any funny election times you remember here locally, John Koshelko? By the way, yeah. recovering politician, we must <laughs> tell everybody. Right? I you had about that. I'm I don't know if we recovered. Well, you, you, I'm sorry, you're an office holder. <laughs> you were never well, a politician, were you? Well, you know, they, they, all, they sometimes say a statesman is a, is a politician who is retired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, supposedly successful. Woo. So, no, I, I guess the most celebrated election in Chicago, I would imagine, was 1960, when, when John F. Kennedy carried the state of Illinois by 8,800 votes. Mm -hmm. And Nixon in that election lost, in, lost narrowly to, to Kennedy. Kennedy mm -hmm. nationwide had a margin of about 100,000 popular votes over Nixon. The Electoral College was, was, was 303 to 219, I think. But the interesting thing is that if, if Nixon... If Nixon had carried Illinois and Texas, he would have won the election. Wow. Mm -hmm. And Illinois, as I say, 8,800 votes. There are those who believe that, that fabricating 8,800 votes would have been child's play for the, yeah. for the Democratic machine in those days because it was, it was all paper ballots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this was in the heyday of what were called the river wards where they could generate, they could crank out as many votes as were necessary. Yeah, many made the point, too, that maybe Nixon's people downstate were interfering with ballots as much as Daly's people up north. They, they made the, but the, the problem is that the, the opportunities, I mean, you, you didn't have the, the massive nature no. of, you know, mm -hmm. 2,500 precincts, I think, in the city of Chicago. Yeah. So, yeah. Texas, he, Texas, Nixon lost by about 45,000 votes. 
Now, whether they could have stolen 45,000 votes in Texas, I don't know. There was, Texas politics in those days was as corrupt oh, yeah. as yeah. Cook County. And Lyndon Johnson was elected to the Senate. They called him Landslide Lyndon because yeah, of... Yeah, he, 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 he the, won by 87 yeah, votes, they and there were 3 million casts. <laughs> right. They stole, the ballot, they stole the ballot boxes yeah. in this one West Texas County. There's a picture... Yeah. There is a picture of a, of an old pickup truck with four or five guys there <laughs> yeah. with overalls, and and there there's the ballot they box the sitting box. on the hood of the truck <laughs> like a like a stag that yeah. had been shot and was being displayed as a trophy on yeah. the on the hood of the car. But again, whether they could have stolen forty six thousand votes, but the, but the change of Illinois and Texas, and of course Texas was Lyndon Johnson's home state, would have given the election to Richard Nixon wow. in nineteen sixty. And it's I mean it's I don't think there are many people who doubt that it is quite likely that Illinois at least was stolen yeah. well, at that time. Well, Ed, Ed Burke tells a story that he ran into one of his former constituents, a woman that moved to Indiana and she was in her 80s and she said to him, uh, Eddie, when I die, I want to be buried in Chicago because I want to stay active in politics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, <that's> a good <laughs> one. Do you remember uh, Marty O'Connor was a reporter for WGN Television? Not Len O'Connor now. Yeah. He was like an yeah, he I asked uh, yeah. he asked Richard J. Uh, can we go out and dredge those elect those voting machines out of <laughs> Lake Michigan to see who really won the election or something? <laughs> <laughs> He's also the one who complimented the fire department on keeping the uh, the lake from burning with the McCormick Place fire. You <laughs> 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 know, it's funny that that in in the news today, and we're talking about the the media and and uh, how they. Just don't see what the real truth is, what the facts are. Don't let, uh, you know, that old saying, don't let the facts, facts get, in, get the, in the way, in the way <laughs> of the, yeah, the truth. But it's Trump has got <coughs> three, four times the followers at his meetings or yeah. whatever you want to call them. The rallies. And she has trouble Huge getting hundreds. And and yet and she, the and polls she, are no. she's way ahead of him. Yeah, you know, uh, and, uh, and she, and well, she, there's a Washington Post poll out today which has Hillary leading Trump by nationwide, likely voters by four points, which is what they call the margin of error. Yeah, uh, the Rasmussen poll, which is, has been considered maybe maybe not well known, but it's been a very accurate poll has had Trump leading all through the campaign, except mm -hmm. I think the week after the Democratic convention, Hillary bumped up by a point or two and then fell back down to no. being behind. So you have to well, take some of these polls with, with a lot of, not just a grain of salt, but a whole shaker of salt. Well, what, what, I, what I point out is that all the so-called experts, the experts, yeah. from the time Trump announced to this day, have been wrong. Yeah, yeah. Every single thing that they said about Trump has been wrong. He was supposed Trump to be gone after the first primary. I remember <laughs> two of the experts had graphs and charts showing how he would not get enough delegates to win on the first ballot yeah. at the convention. Yeah, yeah. And, and very making very convincing arguments. Yeah. Unfortunately, they were wrong. Yeah. And I, my my opinion is I hope they stay wrong right <laughs> yeah. till, till the election. And, you know, when he was winning against a big field, he said, well, you know, he's getting 20%, and, and that's good in a big field, but wait until the field narrows. And then, <laughs> right. Well, he's only getting 30%, and that's yeah. about his. Well, you know, 40% is about his, that's about his ceiling. <laughs> yeah. His ceiling kept getting higher, higher and higher, higher. As, yeah. as, as the election went on. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I yeah. thought he was going to go uh, go far. Right early on, I think it was the first, the first debate. Uh, one of the guys in the neighborhood, he was down here. It's our guest last May, Charlie Johnson. Right away, he said, "Well, he's got my vote." And if you could think of someone's a typical ward person, you know, typical Chicago, it would be him. And, I, and I'm, at the time, I was, I was, I was pulling for um, the guy who wound up on, um, on uh, Dancing with the Stars. You see, uh, <laughs> Rick. Rick, uh, governor of Texas. The governor, Rick, yeah. Oh, what's his name? Oh, Rick, Perry? Rick Perry. Rick Perry. Rick Perry, yeah. Perry, yeah. Oh, William Perry, was it? No, no it was Rick Perry. Rick Perry. And he was, uh, that was my guy originally, you know, I would thought, of everybody was up there. Did he win on Dancing with the Stars? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, they couldn't fix it either. <laughs> no, no, it was, uh, somebody said he didn't have the chance to get on the first ballot. He didn't. But, 
No, I was going to say, uh, but when you see s something like this, this means something, you know. Uh, well, well, plus the, the attack, the Democratic attack machine, I find it very interesting that no one ever accused Trump of being racist prior to him no. running. No. No one no. accused him of, of uh, molesting females no. until he, he started uh, running for yeah. office. Well, he yeah. pointed out that when that when that tape was made, the, the infamous tape, he was a Democrat at that time. You yeah. know? <laughs> that didn't, didn't yeah. seem to bother anybody <laughs> at that time. And plus, they <laughs> talk about him, you know, his qualifications for president. You know, his, his son, uh, Eric, I think... Uh, I think you're going to see d some politics in the future for him. But he made an excellent point. He said, you know, of all the candidates running on both both parties, my father is the only one that ever signed someone's paycheck. Yeah. 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 Which is true. Yeah. I mean, they can yeah. talk about creating jobs, but he, he yeah, actually he created did. jobs. Yeah, he did. He's the only one that ever signed a paycheck on the front. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Well, it's, you know, it's the old saying, and I learned this in school a long time ago, and from people that... Uh, that uh, that I knew that that were big money guys, is that when you go to run an organization or or like this, you know, get into an election and you win that election, the smart guy is the one that puts smart people around him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh and, yeah. And Trump has done this time yeah. again. In business all the time. He yeah. doesn't go out. Right. And yeah. Look at a hotel and see how they're building it. No, yeah. he's got somebody that does that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and this is a smart leader. Yeah, you know. to keep every executive. We saw it in the fire department. You know, you see some guy and he's got a guy he's six months on the job driving him or something. He said, "What? What's what's that guy going to tell him? Nothing. He's going to be a yes man." You know, the, otherwise the, the the chief in the fire department, as the police, you know, you get a commander or whatever. Uh, he has to pick someone to be his aide that knows that's been around the yeah the, yeah the, the block. He's seen a few fires. Not, yeah. not and and when we started getting women in the fire department, I saw a couple of them. Oh, I want her for my buggy driver. Yeah, right. You know, she never even got her feet wet. Yeah, much less whatever else got wet. Yeah. Uh, uh you, you know, and I took I took a beating for that from yeah. a couple of guys. Yeah. Uh, uh, when I said that, you know, uh, what are we going to do? Get these women, and they'll all end up driving buggies or doing, yeah. you know, behind a desk. No. Yeah. You you gotta you gotta surround yourself as a chief. Surround yourself with good with, officers. Yeah, with the best. If the guys a mope, get rid of them. Yeah. You know, right. Yeah. Somehow or yeah. other. <laughs> that's where all the political crap interferes with. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. There exactly. there are yeah. tens of millions of people in this country who are registered to vote. Who never vote? Yeah. Not even for president. I was a precinct captain. I know there were people who came out for every election: school board, yeah. park district. Yeah. Then there was a larger group that v voted in municipal elections, and then there were people that would come out in, in primaries. But the big turnout was when you get to the general election, and the biggest was for president. president. But even for president of the United States, every four years, there are a lot of people who don't vote. vote and if, yeah. if, if, if those people, if, if even a fraction of those people are motivated this time to come out and vote for Trump, yeah. it could throw all these polls right. you know, yeah. into a cocked hat. You know, yeah. one of the best uh, inducements, I think, for voting, I, I forget where I saw it in a, a paper. It was, a, it was a, a full page ad, and it said, it was on election day, and it said, today, do something that millions of people around the world only dream about. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Vote. Yeah. They wish they could do it. They wish they could do it. Yeah. Well, I got yeah. some relatives. I'm glad they don't vote. <laughs> <laughs> I do, too. <laughs> Talk <laughs> about... Da, 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 da. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. What about um, what we're talking more about these polls, like you said, Tom, and uh, you, you mentioned Rush Limbaugh, Bill. Yeah. Um, he said... So many of these polls are meant to influence you as much as they are to test the waters, depending on yeah. which one you're talking it's about. It's exactly true. I yeah. I mean, I, I, I listen to something, I get all down discouraged. Then you, you're trying to get a hold of yourself, and you know, but I mean. Oh, to uh, last week they had Hillary, uh, Hillary already won the election. Did yeah. you? Yeah. If you, if you listen to the mainstream media, yeah. Trump, yeah. Trump is through. Yeah. Uh, he's through. Hillary, you know, because like you said, they're influencing people. Mm -hmm. You're thinking, oh, well. What's Stay the home point? Or yeah, what's the know. point of eating? Another eating. thing that people don't realize is that these polls, these pollsters, they don't just go out and pick three thousand or two thousand people at random. They're weighted. 
they decide how many Democrats are going to be in the poll, how many Republicans, how many Independents, and yeah. very often they may they may weight it with say fifty five percent Democrats because yeah. because they think that's what the turnout is going to be. So if that produces forty four percent for Hillary, well, it's because she's ahead of the game yeah. to begin with, based on who they went out and, and sampled yeah. in their survey. But like in the Reagan, about that. in the Reagan years, you're going to see a lot. What do they call these Reagan Democrats? They call oh, yeah. people. Yeah. yeah, I think you're going to see a lot of that now. I saw evidence of that. I went to a few um, few years back, uh, uh, Tea Party functions, and you know, being in Chicago, you look at everybody. I knew people there were uh, uh, tr traditional, uh, you know, traditionally in the party with different jobs and precinct working and whatever. The family were there at this meeting, so sure. Well, plus an, another thing you find in Chicago, I'm sure you find it in other parts of the country, is there are people that are Democrats, and they are going to vote. Democratic, period. Yeah. They don't yeah. care yeah. who's running. They yeah. are going to vote. Family history, yeah. sure. Right. Yeah. 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 And a lot of it depends on uh, which way your parents, you know. You I, get I the union support that's yeah. almost unwavering, yeah. except for the t when the Teamsters uh, got off out of jail. Yeah. What you just uh, said, Tom, Paul Harvey was talking about that one time. He said, he's talking to someone, and he said how they were so died in the world Democrat, and he says, so you mean... If the devil himself was running in this race as a Democrat, would you vote for him? The guy paused. He says, "I'd have to think about that one." <laughs> 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 like that. So God bless you, Paul. We yeah. miss you. A distinctive yeah. thing about this election is, especially uh, Trump, already, and the election's far from being held, is saying this is a rigged election. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I can see his point up to a bit. In the vast majority of states are Republican legislatively, so you wonder what he well, has his problems with a lot of Republicans. The thing of is, it, it's mystifying that certain groups of people vote consistently for a Democrat. It, uh, black voters being the, the most glaring uh, group because Example of by every measure, right. blacks are worse off under right. this president right. than under the last president. By yeah. every single Same measure, thing. I don't care yeah. what measure yeah. you use. Yeah. Household income, educational level, unemployment, you can go right down the list. They're worse off, but they v vote consistently. As a matter of fact, I think that was a pretty good message. The Trump said to him, hey, what do you got to lose? <laughs> yeah, yeah you know? sure. And the media didn't like that. No, they, they, they mocked they that. Kept yeah. mocking that. Yeah. When, when Trump says that the election is rigged, he's mainly talking about the media. I mean, he's not... not He's not emphasizing like saying there's going to be vote fraud at the with ballot. ballots or something. No, like he that. said well, there. He, he, like says, he said there may be some. He's concerned yeah. about some of that, but his main thrust is that he said it's two on one. I'm not just facing the Democrats. I'm facing facing the whole news industry as well. The whole media is against yeah. me as well. Yeah. And that's that's the main thing he's complaining about it being rigged. The, I mean the, the way they cover. Right when right and and they they cover uh, White House news releases as as like factual mm -hmm. when it's oh, yeah. when it's shaded oh yeah i mean they they to talk about the, the the propaganda the 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 uh state-run media something's issued from the white house and it's read like this is orthodox yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. i heard kane this morning uh, hillary's running mate when they asked him about these all of these uh, WikiLeaks reports and he's well you, see, you can't you can't put any stock in that. They haven't been authenticated. Who's authenticated them? <laughs> I thought, well, who's authenticated all these accusations uh, against Trump? All these yeah. women that are made. Who's authenticated yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they also they haven't had disclaimers either. It's I don't know. You know, that's all made up. That is, yeah. you know. Yeah. But well, plus, it, I, you know, again, he's not a politician, so he says things that politicians <laughs> wouldn't dream of <laughs> saying. Yeah. As a matter of fact, the one woman he made the comment. Uh, I, w I wouldn't. I wouldn't have anything to do with her. Not, not, not her. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's like you, you yeah. think. You think I'd have something to do with? Take a look one? at her. Yeah. 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 We're a politician Polit and never say that. Politicians no. learn to answer questions without saying anything. They yeah. they just talk mm -hmm. a lot of political speak. Well, and on, on yeah. the one hand, we. Yeah. 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 But then on the other hand, <laughs> right. and so we yeah. must. You know. And you realize at the end they haven't they haven't said they anything. Have, they, they haven't answered, answered the question. question. You learn how to do this. Yeah. Right. And Hillary's Hillary's very adept at that. An another thing, like I say, our, our black neighbors could benefit from was a little examination of history, uh, following the Civil War and Reconstruction up till I believe, the New Deal. Black voters traditionally voted Republican. The party of Lincoln. Uh, <laughs> in our our own city, sure. we had uh, a congressman, Oscar de Priest. The first congressman, black congressman elected 
outside of the reconstruction south to the to the yeah. to the to the uh, House representatives ever. Yeah. I worked with one of his great nieces in the police department. Guess what? A Republican. I he believe Republican. Martin Luther King Sr., the father of Martin Luther King, was a registered Republican. Mm -hmm. I think you're right, John. Yeah. 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 Well, sure. Clinton, I forget, uh, his mentor in Arkansas was a Klan member. In, oh, yeah. In, in, in those days, you know, in the South, you, you almost had to be a Klan member Jane to get elected. William Fulbright, who Fulbright, voted, voted right. against every civil rights right, bill Fulbright. that ever came, uh, ever came to the Senate. You, you, had, you had to be a member of the Klan. You couldn't get elected. Excuse me, gentlemen, it's time for another intermission. Gentlemen. You've been listening to Meet the Chicago yeah. Historians, and we thank you for it. Who is he we'll be right back. About? Gentlemen, who came in? Do you suffer from pain? Do you know someone that has constant pain of their low back, neck, shoulder, knee, or wrist. Have they tried medications, exercise, physical therapy, or chiropractic, and nothing seemed to make it better? Well, I may have your answer. Why not try a napropath? Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Wayne Chickowitz, and I've been practicing 30 years treating pain. I'm board certified and hold a diplomat in pain management. For your convenience, we have two locations in Cicero, 3602 South 61st Avenue, 708 656 or in Villa Park at 122 West St. Charles Road, Suite 1A, 630 833 4007. Why not try a napropath and stop the pain today? Now, back to our show. Jack? <laughs> now? Right now? The National Organization of Women? No, not that one. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, as, as we were saying, uh, uh, before we, we went to a, a, a break again, um, what was I saying? Oh, yes. If the our black citizens realized that they had been Republicans before. Yeah. Now, we hear, too, how much uh, uh, someone said, oh, the Democratic Party was the party of slavery, which it was, and the Republican wasn't. Mm -hmm. And heard someone say, and uh, some politician in speech said, well, that's all been reversed, whatever that's supposed to mean. Yeah. So it's all been reversed now. Yeah. What do you mean it's been reversed? <laughs> and then people just, or the commentator just takes that as, as fact. Yeah. Or fact, let me challenge. Know, a couple of, couple of months ago, I had to go down to Springfield mm -hmm. and testify for that thing that they're having for my son. And, and when I got out of there, the trooper that was driving me down there, a uh, very nice guy. I, I just, I looked at him and I said, Mike, I am so glad to be out of this business yeah. again. Yeah. When I was, the, you know, yeah. and even, uh, not the president, but uh, even before that yeah. and, and after, I just, I had it with yeah. those politicians down there, uh, yeah. you know. I... Uh, we, we had a couple of firemen die in, uh, on the East Coast, and we went to uh, their service. And who shows up there but Gore and Clinton and that. And <laughs> the guys were, oh, God, can I, I want to go in there. I want to go in that room. I said, and do what? Yeah. You don't have a gun on you. Yeah. You, know, you <laughs> can't do that. I said, I, I don't even want to shake hands with them. Yeah. Uh, you, know. you know, a good example of politicians you know depending their their feelings depending upon which way the wind is blowing an analogy that I like to use is the gay pride parade of course now it's the pride parade uh, when that first stepped off I don't know what is it 25 30 years ago now yeah, at least about that, um, yeah. there wasn't a politician that would get within six yeah, blocks of that parade oh. yeah now they're bumping their heads together to get so in the in, in the front. Yeah. They realize because it a turned lot of money because it turned into votes. A, because it's a, a voting block. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, if there was a big enough boil sucker vote, <laughs> and there was a boil sucker parade, politicians would be leading. You know, and I personally, I've uh, never sucked a boil, but I know my friends are good boil suckers. I mean, really, Jack, it's is that true? It's po wow. poli politicians, which if the if the oh, wind is yeah. blowing that yeah. way. That's yeah. the way they're going to go. Exactly. Yeah. Another thing along the lines, what you said, everything is reversed. 
you know, Southern white voters, Southern whites, they were just wonderful people back in the 30s and 40s when they were voting for FDR and for Harry Truman and even into the 50s and for mm -hmm. Kennedy. When they started voting for Nixon and Reagan, they suddenly became bigots. Right. right. Southern whites suddenly became awful people. They became, yeah. they were just bigots and mm -hmm. racists. Now, mm -hmm. it's the same people. Right. You, know, you look at the southern states were universally democratic for decades, and that was great. Oh, that was wonderful. It was the solid South. John, wow. was terrific. John, prime example, Bernie Epton. When Bernie Epton uh, ran for mayor, yeah. Bernie Epton was known as the liberal Jew from Chicago prior to his election, mm -hmm. prior to his candidacy. Then, as soon as he became a candidate, he became a racist, mm -hmm. like overnight. Yeah. He, he, I, I talked to his brother, the the judge. He said it, it really hurt him. I mean, it was sure. like, and, uh, John, you probably knew, you probably yeah, knew. I'm just him. gonna say, like Lloyd Benson in the debate. Right. I knew Bernie yeah, Epton. Right. Bernie Epton. Was, he was no, he right. was a friend of mine. I can't claim to, but I did serve with him for two years. Bernie Epton was one of the nicest guys right. that you would ever meet. He was a terrific guy, and I think universally liked and respected. Mm -hmm. Don, even even when he had the reputation as a liberal, conservatives liked, I was a conservative, right. I, everybody liked Bernie yeah. Epton because you knew he was a man of conviction. He was genuine, correct? He was, yeah, yeah, he, he was, was a man of real. principle, a good a very, an extremely intelligent, extremely well-educated, knowledgeable guy. And as you say, all those years of being, of being just, you know, wonderful when he was a liberal, suddenly... When he ran, when he ran in, in the mayoral race, he became a bigot. Yeah, and they, they, and that, that hurt him. Yeah, yeah. 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 Remember, uh, he got up there and Harold Washington started talking about Reaganomics, which was, didn't have a hell of a lot to do with the mayoral race. It kind of threw him. I remember that part. I remember but once I was I was making my my drive to Springfield, and I knew exactly. I had calculated on the on the odometer exactly where the midpoint was, and it was a little farm there. It was in it was in. Uh, one of the downstate counties, Livingston County, and I would always pull off the road for about 10 minutes, you know, and just and just get out, take a walk, stretch, and, and look at the look at the uh, the fields. Water the tulips. Yeah, it was I, I love the country. <laughs> well, I'm there parked, you know, I'm, and I'm behind the wheel, and another car pulls up beside me and rolls the window, and it was Bernie Epton, hmm. and yeah. he says, "Are you all right?" Because he saw my legislative plates. Yeah. He's, I said, "Oh, I'm fine." I said, "I always stop here and take a break." I says. He's oh I just he's I saw your plates I just wanted to make sure you were okay yeah. that you weren't having a I mean that's the kind of <laughs> no, guy that's, that's that's really something, somebody yeah. else would just you know yeah. I'm I'm got I'm headed to Springfield yeah. that's I'm not going to waste time to mm -hmm. see what this guy's yeah. doing yeah. what was, was his story was after he was after. defeated was he d be went out of politics uh, he was he actually was retired wasn't he yeah, yeah because yeah. he had, well I think he was eventually eliminated by the the way you know, with the cutback when they when they did away with the multi because he was a remember he was elected from the city of Chicago yeah. as a Republican. So when they did away with the three-member districts, where you had the minority member, you'd have two Democrats. Yeah. He he, all those city Republicans were all eliminated yeah. after that after that 1980 election. So yeah. he 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 did not go back in '82, just as I did not go back in '82 because my district was was cut up. Now what we just said, what you said, Tom, what you said, uh, John, John Superman, Jonas uh Rich, Bill, Ken, Sal. Sell. I sell. Julius. John. Benedict, Red. Jack. Okay. Ulysses. Bye. No. <laughs> what you just said about um, uh, Epton having this reputation. What would that, uh, that primary have been like, or what would the election have been like, have been Epton versus Richie Daly? Who would have been the hmm. the uh, the liberal, the everyone's friend, and how would have been portrayed differently? Would you think there might have been a little bit of a different uh, portrayal there? The lakefront liberal and the, you know... I nope. think still the fact that he was he was a Republican. I mean, yeah. that's what it. Yeah. No, what I mean is the he, characterization. He was, was going to be the villain. He was he was yeah. bound to be the villain. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Well. We vote on that one. Hmm. I d I, d I don't know. I don't I don't really. I don't really have a take on how that would have yeah. would have. Well, wasn't his brother was Saul Epton, the judge, right? Right. 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 Yeah. He was the one. <laughs> this is the story that we heard years ago. I think I heard it from you, Tom. Originally, he was in what well, used to have boys' court. Over 17, but not yet 21, because when once you're 17, you'll know you're no longer a juvenile. And it was, he had some young black offender with a gun, and in the court they asked him, where did you get the gun? And he said, Jewtown. <laughs> <So> <laughs> <I was laughs> 
could. Lord. Yeah. 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 Remember that story? Oh, yeah. yeah. Judge. Yeah. Yeah. What did yeah. Saul say? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Saul left then, yeah. I remember Bernie didn't go to the Unity breakfast then, but Saul did in his place. Anyway, well, but that was a, they, they really you guys mentioned cop talk before and what was they did the, a dirty thing to him what was the police officer that was uh, on there Bill uh, Jack and Eddie Jack and Eddie oh, yeah. anyway you know he had to beat at uh, North Damon in Milwaukee he had to walk, uh, yeah that was post. his beat yeah. yeah so he's listening to the radio you know again Given a description, he's wearing a Dago T-shirt. He says, <laughs> he gets on. He says, "Stop that! You can't, you know, yeah. racial well, that's, profiling." That's like when Walter Jacobson called it uh, a paddy wagon. Yeah. yeah. Oh. No one ever objects to that, do they? No. 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 Anyway, you know where the term Dago comes from? The English, the guys that taught our people, Tom, to drink tea and forbade them from speaking uh, Gaelic. They referred to Spaniards and Italians as Diego's, and it, oh, contra- oh, it, it, oh. it got you know. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, well, I you can, that. you can take it to the bank. You yeah. learn something you every learn day. Something See, every day. <laughs> another little bit of useless information. Yeah. That, that's good. Maybe we should do a program on ethnic slurs. Yeah. <laughs> Say, <Same>, man. <laughs> well, you know the term. You know all these terms like a Dutch uncle. Yeah. Is kind of a blowhard. Or a Dutch treat, which yeah. is no treat. Or you're going Dutch when you're going, yeah, d- d- you, d- which, mean, which means that, you, which means you know, they all trace back to the time when England was was at war with the Dutch. Yeah. And so mm. the Dutch were the villains, sure. and so all these these are all English expressions that go yeah. back to the 17th century. Yeah. When when uh, the English were 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 uh, giving it to the Dutch, who were their adversaries. Yeah. You know, last night or yesterday, I looked at the TV guide and. Uh, uh, happened to see a program on Channel 20, which is W W Y C C. Yeah, and it says the Great Fire. And uh, I thought, oh, I gotta watch this. Yeah. Maybe I should call Frank. You know, McMenamin. He wrote the book on it, and he he said, uh, "Well, I turned it on. It, it was like ten minutes after the I, Great I, Fire. I know what it was in English. London. It's yeah, it was London. Oh. Yeah, sixteen sixty. I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, boy, am I glad I didn't call Frankie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Great Fire of London. Yeah. 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 Now there have been a couple of state politicians who seem to have maybe because of their they are essentially liberal. They seem to be more plain spoken and seem to have overcome the. Uh, label of politician, I think one would be Paul Douglas. A lot of people look upon him rather fondly. Mm-hmm. And I'm drawing a total blank on the more recent senator who had a deep voice and a bow tie, and his daughter was in politics until recently. Oh, oh simple, Simon. Simple, simple Simon. 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 Oh, Paul, Paul Simon. Simon. Yeah. Yeah. Paul he Simon. seems to have uh, left with a good reputation. Some, yeah. some, sometimes well, referred we, to as we, simple we Simon. We talked about her before in the program, and you knew her uh, plain spoken as uh, Judy Topinka. Uh, Judy, oh, yeah. Judy yeah, Topinka. Yeah, we served together in the legislature. Yeah. She's a good yeah. politician. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. She was someone that if you ever met her, you would realize she's a genuine right. person. Yeah. She yeah. doesn't sure. give you that phony. Genuine That very honest, straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. She was terrific. Yeah. Isn't terrific that lady. rare <laughs> yeah. right. in the political it, it, view? Yeah. It, it should be the norm, but it isn't, yeah. I That's guess. Why yeah. These t- two stand out that I just mentioned. Yeah. You know, yeah. Paul yeah. Douglas, yeah. it seems to me that he was in his 40s, mid-40s, when World War, at the time of Pearl Harbor, yeah. like he enlisted That's in the right. Marines think, when he I was... It, he I think was might have, he might have even been 50. He could, or yeah, or I, when he I came know, out, I, I think it was he 50. Was, he, was, he was what would be right. considered way over yeah. military yeah. age. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And wound up coming out, I think he was a lieutenant colonel, yeah. and, and had all sorts of battle citations. I mean, I mean, I may not have agreed with a plea, but he was a terrific yeah. guy in terms yeah. of his heroism mm-hmm. in the war. Yeah. Wasn't he from Hyde Park or something, too? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he was yeah. alderman out there, and he eventually was uh, what U.S. senator, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Senator and his, his big and thing was the uh, the dunes, saving the, the Indiana, Indiana sand dunes. dunes. Yeah, yeah <laughs> right. he was in his state, but you know, yeah. he wanted well, yeah. to save it. Well, I'm glad they saved it. I am too. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. what's left of it? You know, we have more locally, a longtime alderman that was a Burr and Daly's uh, rear end was uh, Leon Dupre. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Again, basically a liberal. He Who's that? Could be Douglas considered a... Uh, oh, Leon Dupre. Leon Dupre. Oh, Leon Dupre, yeah. And, yeah. and he was fifth ward. The man yeah. with the microphone that kept going dead. At <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, what a coincidence. <laughs> yeah. When I was in 21st in District... Inopportune times. <laughs> we had a special attention on his house while on vacation. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's my claim to fame. Yeah. Leon Dupre's house. Yeah. 
What about uh, Everett Dirksen? Where was he from? What did you order? meet Dupre or talk with him? Or they were on vacation. Oh, he was oh, okay. gone. Well, you might see him yeah. the day he was leaving or the day he came back. What, what does an Irish family go on vacation? <laughs> To a different bar. Bang. You know who was a, a good, uh, I, I thought was a good outspoken guy too, was Jim Thompson. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, yeah. he, he, Thompson. Yeah, he, yeah. he didn't. And he just, uh, you know, when he got out of there, when he got out of, he just practicing law somewhere. Yeah. You know. you know what he was? He was actually really a good prosecutor. In, I mean, yeah. in yeah. court prosecutor. Yeah. Not just yeah. the guy with the office. Right. Yeah, no. Yeah. no. And, and, you know, he used to, uh, he collected antiques. And, yes. You know, and mm -hmm. I, I used to see him, you know, and he'd be walking around when he was governor. He'd be walking around looking at things. Yeah. You didn't just say hello, hello, hello. How are you? Oh, fine. You know. He lived over in 83's district. Then. Yeah, he um, lived at, uh, I can tell you where he lived. Boy. 801 Hutchinson, 800 Hutchinson. Mm -hmm. No, you, no, this was this was later on. Uh, this yeah. was when he was governor because they had the cameras on there. Oh, he, he, he lived on Fullerton that. somewhere uh, later uh, on. This was over yeah. on uh, maybe maybe 46, 4500. Not Lakeshore Drive, but he uh, had a big mansion over there. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, yeah. I know he was... We used to take some stuff over there. Yeah. After yeah. He was the governor when Johnny was uh, oh, when, yeah. uh, uh, in, and he uh, we, we took some things yeah. over there for him. He was very good to us, too. You know, you brought out something interesting. You know, when they circulate petitions, you know, to get people on the ballot, they always show where they live. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and I'm good on addresses, you know, and you mm -hmm, see like yes. Mayor Daly, 1514 South Prairie or some address yeah. like that, you know. And I'm sure it's on the legit, you know, it has to be. Sure, sure. So who, who, uh, who did Thompson succeed? Was it uh, Dan Walker? Dan Walker. Remember Dan Walker? Sure, yeah. yeah. I remember Dan Walker. Eberkron remember Dan Walker, Tom? He was Street. another. The yeah, Walker the Report? Eberkron Police Riot. Fitch he was another uh, reformer that. Wound up in jail. Yeah, no. yeah. ended up in jail. Mm -hmm. yeah. After he was governor, though, there's a little right. distinction. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, he didn't. When I was in Springfield, I met Bill Stratton. Oh, yeah. Governor oh, yeah. William Stratton, who was mm -hmm. governor, governor of the 50s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, the office building where my office in Springfield was, was the Stratton building. They had named it. That's and, right. And he would come there. He would... He must have lived in the area, and he would come around periodically. I once had a chance to meet him and introduce yeah. myself and talk. Again, very affable, very like. Apparently, and apparently, from what I understood, was was very well liked in Springfield when he was in politics. He was a very yeah. respected man. Did he, did he lose a leg and play for the White Sox? That was Monty. Stratton. Oh, wrong guy, <laughs> <laughs> wrong one. Wrong that was the Stratton story. <laughs> but he didn't yeah. lose a leg, though, huh? No, I don't think so. No? I don't think. How so. about Von Solberg Hospital? You heard of that one on Southside? Sure. 6,500 South Palestine. <laughs> that's the, uh, yeah. Lithu it's a Lithuanian museum now. Yeah, that's where they, that right? that's the place yeah. that they, right. uh, they amputated the wrong leg on somebody. Oh, yeah. Ooh. There was a big lawsuit on that, but the guy lost it. Wow. He didn't have a leg to stand on. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> but that's a true Dang. story about that happening. Uh. He not only lost the leg, he lost the lawsuit. <laughs> when yeah. Tom and myself we used to coach grade school sports, we had football team, and we had a kid, Bobby Eppenstein, went on to be an all-state middle guard for St. Rita tough. You know, just natural. He was a natural. He got shook up in a game. They wanted to take him in the exam. They admitted him in Von Solbrig. And they kept him all week long. His mother said, the they, oh, he said, his head's bothering him. His head's bothering him. He says, I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> so she got her doctor to transfer him to, Eng to Englewood Hospital and he was released the next day. Yeah. So yeah, that's... That um, Von Solbrig, that was, I think, the last privately owned hospital in the United States. He owned a hospital in Acapulco, too. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. And if you, you brought somebody in there, I know I used to, when I was in Area 3 traffic, we had a lot of accident victims went in there. And I, one guy, he woke up on the gurney and said, where am I? <laughs> he said, Vince Ulbrich, he said, get, get me the get hell me, out of here. Yeah. I know the uh, the guys on there, it was before the day, days of paramedics, Bill, guys on the local fire ambulance, they had an affectionate name for it. They called it the butcher shop. There you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> was, uh, seriously. We had some of those up north, too. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the situations was that our ambulance at Midway, which was Ambulance 12, <laughs> they didn't have a hospital in their district. They used to go to that, what was it, Central 
Central Community? Central Community. Yeah. The old, old South Town Hospital. Yeah, 57th and yeah. Wood? Arena, was it? Yeah. Or Wood Street. Like Wood Street? Yeah. yeah, Central Community. Yeah. And, you know, somebody got injured at Midway Air, or they're going to uh, McNeil Hospital in yeah. Berwyn, or, yeah. you know. They did That's not named after Don McNeil. My neck of the right. woods. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, occasionally they'd That's wind up true, at uh, Mount Sinai, <laughs> you know, I mean, way out of their district, you yeah. know. Because they didn't have... Uh, in Holy Cross. Well, Holy Cross, you know. And, it's so and we had uh, well, so a lot of hospitals closed along... Uh, what were the ones over around 55th and 57th? And I have... Uh, I have uh, evangelical. Some mixed figures. Yeah, evangelical. Yeah. evangelical. Yeah. Yeah. Holy Cross. Uh, I got hurt on the job, and they had to operate. And, uh, you know, your, your, your anesthetist is always a... A guy, an Asian or a, a, a whatever, Indian, and uh, what here tribe? comes a a big big guy. He's about he's about jack size, and he was Irish, and I thought, oh boy, this is this is going to be nothing now. This I got a white Irish guy that's going to, you know, knock me out. Well, they did they did the operation, and uh, I'm in the in the uh, ante room and uh, I kept throwing up blood oh. the blood was Woo. was going down to my stomach mm -hmm. and then naturally I was throwing up and I, I and I finally I said what is wrong with me nurse yeah. come here what why do I keep the she says oh well the, the doctor's gonna be in there in a little while <laughs> so here comes this guy and he said uh, and, and by the way his name was Burke he said, uh, what's the matter? And I said, I keep throwing up blood. What? Well, uh, when I was knocking you out, or he didn't use those words, when I was knocking you out, I, I kind of touched a little vein in your throat. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and I said, oh, okay. okay. He says, it'll go away in a little while. Yeah. By the next day, it was gone. Yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. thought, I don't ever want to yeah. get... A, you know, I want Mohammed or so <laughs> whoever to do that to me again. Yeah, is it going to go away or are you going to go away? <laughs> this last time I was in with the pacemaker, the guy came in and he, he says, I'm, I'm going to uh, uh, be the, the guy. He was, I don't know what he was. He was a little dark skinned. And uh, I said, oh, I said, well, I'm not afraid now. <laughs> I said, but I should be. Yeah. He had a Packers. Oh, Green Bay uh, Packers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the cheese but had I turned to out all right. Yeah, right. The cheese yeah. had to go. Yeah. <laughs> and did he talk football? He, he uh, no. What, I don't think he knew what. What team do you? Uh, <laughs> they got beat yesterday. Yes, oh, they yeah. did. And they're going to be here listening. Thursday. Uh, yeah, where is it? Oh, it's here, is it? Yeah. Yeah. It's up there. No, it's, it's up there. It's up there. It's up there? Yeah, it's up there. Oh, were you out there yesterday, Tom? Lambo Field. Were you out there yesterday, Bill? Oh, yeah. No. Hell no. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm going to sell my <laughs> seats, <laughs> my yeah, tickets. It's not, look, it's not looking good. Oh, yes, yesterday was one of my favorite incidents in the news because there was it's the football season, and the Bears played yesterday, and the headline story in the news was baseball. And I love yeah. that. I love <laughs> that when baseball is number right. one. Number one, mm. yeah. But football has, it means nothing to me, but mm. I shouldn't say this, yeah. but... Uh, Huge, huge now, if I had my way, oh, yeah, I understand. you'd have the Super Bowl. You go right into opening opening season at baseball. Forget that other stuff, you know. <laughs> that game with the hoop and the ho yeah. and the puck. Oh, yeah, and that, that, mm. uh, they bounce yeah. the ball around and then they yeah. throw it through the basket. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Naismith. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they used to use baskets, I think. That's, is that what it's called, basketball? It's called basketball. something like that. Right? Originally, you had an actual basket, yeah, they, w yeah, guy, they used and you also had a jump ball after every... After every score, <laughs> they had a guy up, and a guy was assigned up there to, to take the ball out of the basket and throw it back down onto yeah. the onto the court. Oh, it was like a so tennis. Was. It, yeah, hmm. and then somebody got the idea. Hey, we could cut a hole. <laughs> out of the basket. Oh, what a great idea! <laughs> eliminate yeah, the job, he, huh? What he na he he, he, he nailed a couple of bushel baskets up at, at the end, or, or yeah. maybe less than a bushel basket, and that's why it came to be called basketball. Bas so you had yeah. to have a guy up there to, to, to retrieve yeah. the ball out of the I basket didn't, and throw didn't it back that, down. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know when I, I guess when I started yeah. high school, they they were still having the jump ball, and uh, you know. Well, till recent years, all these jump balls every time was a grab. Now they have the opposite. Uh, do they do that in the pros too? I don't even know. 
you know, go, the arrow going this way and that way for like uh, possession arrows. Yeah, yeah, they do help. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that kind of helped the game, didn't it? How about the three point shot? Did that help the game? Any you think? I, 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 think, I so. think so. Yeah. yeah. More more scoring is always good yeah. for yeah. any yeah. sport. And and that is you know gets these guys out there to yeah. Well, you, you don't have to be seven feet tall either, right? right? Exactly. Yeah. I uh, I when I was going to Marquette, I played. I played freshman ball, and and but I was no good. Uh, but the guys that were with me uh, all went on to play for Marquette, and, uh, and all made a name for themselves. There's a guy by the name of Terry Rand. Never forget this guy, and he was like seven five or something. Yeah, I mean, he was a big <laughs> thin guy. He shouldn't be allowed to play. And, and well, we went out, and and I mean, we all hung around. And uh, we went out one day, and we were walking down uh, the street right in front of Jesu. Uh, uh, J- <laughs> we call it Jesu College. It was Jesu Church. <laughs> and and here comes a guy, and and we, we were just standing there talking. The guy was listening to us, and he said, he said to Terry, he said, uh, oh, he says. How's the air up there where you are? You know? <laughs> and the guy says, uh, "Well, before. he says, how's the air around my <laughs> yeah about blank my, my took my blank?" <laughs> and the guy just <laughs> he walked away, and I I've, yeah. I've never forgot that. Yeah, that's yeah. A, Terry that's a good, was that's a good, good response. Yeah, yeah, it is a good. Yeah. No, uh, what's his name? Alderman. Who was the alderman? He was part of that same relay team that Jesse Owens was on. Oh, Met- Metcalf. 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 He, he was a Mark from Marquette University. Was he? he? Yeah. 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 And that was in the 30s, right? It was the 30s, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Right. It was Metcalf, Jesse Owens yeah, I guess, yeah. and yeah, Marquette so. and uh, Metcalf, Metcalf and another black guy and one white guy, or two white guys were in that famous relay team. They said Hitler wouldn't shake Jesse Owens' hand while he wasn't there that day. This was at the... Olympics that were in the uh, 1936 Olympics. Berlin, Berlin Olympics. Berlin Olympics, right, yeah. 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 You know, I, I just read something on that. The Nazi Olympics. Hitler, uh, since he was sponsoring, you know, because the, they had the stadium and everything, was told, he was present, was told, and he did not e- congratulate anybody. You cannot show partiality. And, mm. his, and the Germans won the most medals at that. Yeah. Oh, okay. But uh, he didn't even, uh, could not congratulate them. The oh. United so States was leading for like the first week and into the second week. But then the last four days, I think, a number of events came up in which America was not as good. And the Germans yeah. pulled ahead of us just yeah, in the last right. few days yeah. of, of the Olympics. There was another thing. But he was only shaking hands. He was congratulating the Germans. Yeah. That well, won. I, I was and he was told, you either congratulate everybody or nobody. And oh. so that, w- that was the end of the, of yeah. the you know. There was uh, another incident there where the great, or the, the opening or the closing, they wanted you to come by and you're supposed to dip your flag past the reviewing stand, yeah. and our people wouldn't do it with the American flag. The American flag is never yeah. dipped. Yeah. See, th- they, they asked them, uh, no, no that w- the first time I think it wasn't dipped was in London. London. And the response from the, the he was an Irishman carrying the m- American flag. And he said, uh, "This this flag dips for no earthly king." Hmm. And supposedly the real story was uh, the other Irishman in the contingent told him, "You dip that flag, and you'll be in the hospital tomorrow." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, so That's blunt. The interest, yeah. and you're going to get uh, yeah. cheap cheap uh, Kugelman's uh, anesthetist. We're <laughs> apparently the only country in the world that has as part of our protocol that the American flag remains bolt upright. It is never dipped to anyone or anything. No. Right. And 1908, when it was in, was in London, the King of England was reviewing it, and he understood. But Hitler had a fit when, because all the other flags were being dipped, including the, the, the Union Jack and the French tricolor. And he had a fit, and Goering apparently knew the knew the protocol and said, Mein Fuhrer, it's, it's the American yeah. custom, they don't dip their flag to anybody. But Hitler still did not appreciate the fact yeah. that the Americans didn't, yeah. dip, didn't dip the stars and stripes. That makes me think of uh, Big Bill Thompson in elections, Republican, was he the last Republican yes. mayor of Chicago? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He was, his, one of his ma- campaign promises was to punch the King of England in the <laughs> nose. <laughs> <laughs> he called it a snoot. You know what, you know, he has come down as being very corrupt. I think 
after he passed away, they yeah. found like a million dollars in his safety, you know. You know who he was good to? The fire department in the city of Chicago. Because he was the one that authorized the two platoon system, hmm. which is what Local 2, wasn't even Local 2 yet. No. This was 1917. He also uh, bought uh, uh, motorized fire equipment to replace the horses. He realized that was, you know, that was inefficient, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, oh yeah, and he also, when, he, he had been all of it in the second ward, which is just south One of... One moment. South of... Wait, wait a minute. Well, hello, hello, oh, Rich. Uh, go ahead. Brief yeah. interruption. We'll be right back after sure. these messages of interest yeah. and that importance. Thought. Hold that thought. I got another thought about Marquette University. Did you graduate? Do you need a carpet for your living room, dining room, bedroom, den, or family room, or even outdoor patio? Well, the place to go for a great deal is the Carpet Warehouse located at 4300 West Montrose Avenue in Chicago, or call Carpet Warehouse at area code 773-283-0100. So remember, friends, for a great deal on any carpeting you might need for your living room, dining room, bedroom, den, family room, or even your outdoor patio, go or call Carpet Warehouse. And once again, they are located at 4300 West Montrose Avenue in Chicago, or give them a call at 773-283-0100. They are just east of Cicero Avenue or the Kennedy Expressway exit on the north side of the street on Montrose. Carpet Warehouse, 4300 West Montrose Avenue or call 283-0100 for a great deal. Remember, Carpet Warehouse, 4300 West Montrose Avenue in Chicago. And now back to our discussion. We are uh, returned, and we were talking about. Uh, uh, oh, we were talking about Marquette University before. Yes. Now that's yes. that's the area that uh, Jeffrey Dahmer lived, right? right? Around Somewhere there? around there, yeah. yeah. You know yeah, what they? You know what they said? I got to tell you this one. You know what they found in Jeffrey Dahmer's refrigerator? No. What did I'm they sorry, find? What, what did they, they found? Find? I'm sorry. <laughs> what they found in Jeffrey Dahmer's medicine cabinet? I'll be the Ed McMahon. Head no. What did they find there? Head and shoulders. Oh. So Yo. Da 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 da. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I had to tell that one. Wish Tom was there to ridicule me for it. But anyway. How um, hot was it? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was so hot. The <laughs> picture. Anyway, uh, back to elections and. Uh, what about, uh, remember we had people like Lar America First Daily oh, yeah. Yeah. Who run for everything? Yeah. Uncle, Dressed up Sam Uncle Sam Soup. Yeah. 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 He was a south side guy. He owned a company that made bar stools. <laughs> right. My cousins actually <laughs> lived near them. He went to their party for his house. He did all this on it. He spent his own money on this stuff. It was D-A-L-Y, not D-A-L-E-Y, oh. so it wasn't. But I understand they didn't like him uh, had to be on the ticket because you know how voters are, right? Oh, sure. Yeah. But I think we remember when he came on the Jack Parr show. Yes, there's an no, Uncle Sam. That. Sam, wow. under, under the equal time, <laughs> ja uh, Kennedy uh, uh, Parr had, had Nixon on and Kennedy on 1960. He was so running for president. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was. So th of course they announced it, and he came out in his Uncle <laughs> Sam costume. And uh, of course Parr loved something like this anyway, you know. Yeah. Sure. And uh, he said, uh, under a, uh, what do you say, under a, under Douglas MacArthur, a Lar Daily. We would have turned Red China into one big vast graveyard or something like that. And, uh, he was uh, very uh, outspoken about that stuff. Remember one, one other time when he was running for mayor? He said, what would your first order be to the police department? He said, I order every policeman to shoot every dope peddler on sight. <laughs> Do so. I remember That'd that. That would be interesting. Yeah, it would be interesting. <laughs> yeah. Did he ever win anything? I don't know. No. I no, not that I, no, I don't think I don't so. Think no. So, no. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. How, how about that Mayor Egan? Was it Elgin? Elgin or Paul Aurora? Egan. Yeah, what was his thing? Paul Egan. Didn't he, he appoint like a barmaid pl- chief of police? Or Wasn't that Aurora? Well, one, I said Aurora, Aurora or Elgin. Aurora, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. talking about in the late 50s, early yeah, 60s. Paul Egan. Remember that guy? No, I don't remember. No? no. No. That was a, that was an unusual yeah, uh, yeah. situation. How about Sabanjan in Bob uh, Sabanjan from Waukegan? Yeah. 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 yeah, he got a lot of uh, notoriety, didn't yeah, he? What he was sure his did. thing? He got notoriety because uh, he he was um, featured occasionally on Jack Benny show because uh, he was he, from he, he was, was mayor of uh, Waukegan. Waukegan yeah, when in, in the, right? yeah, and they also named he was the mayor when they named the high school after Jack Benny. Hmm. No, like he that. was. Uh, um, was he also it? like anti, uh, uh, anti uh, affirmative action? He had kind of a law and order image. At the yeah. Yeah. Is that what it was? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Law and yeah. order. Yeah. Image. Oh. He ran as a write-in candidate, I think, for the United States Senate. Yeah. I remember him being on TV where he was explaining to people how you would cast a write-in vote. He was personally okay. describing mm-hmm. how you'd cast and a how to spell his name too. Yeah. What extraction yeah, was right. that? Was that? Um, I think Ar- maybe Armenian. I think it was. Yeah, I yeah. think you're right. Armenian. I think so, yeah. Armenians from. Uh, there Wasn't his son uh, take over after he died, or I don't recall. Some member yeah. of the family. I yeah, I remember. I remember. Uh, yeah, I remember him. Very good to the police and fire. Yeah. Was he? Oh yeah. 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 I was in grade school, so. Yeah. Wasn't very uh, good to me here. There was. Saint Kudor. When you speak about write-in, there was a uh, write-in candidate for mayor of New York. Uh, Italian name. He was a judge or something like that, and they had a. They couldn't decide on the, uh, you know, a candidate. You know that they could rally behind, and they wanted him, and he said no. He said I. Well, maybe he refused, etc. Roughly, what time frame is this going? Yeah, and maybe uh, around sixty or so. Wow. Yeah. I can't think of the. It was an Italian name, and he did become mayor for you know one term. Well, there was, impeli- there was an That's Italian mayor, Impelitari, in the, er, in the like, late That's 40s, early yeah, 50s. Yeah, that was and, the and guy, Impelitari. Before that Wagner, because Bob right. Wagner was mayor for like three or four terms yeah. in the 50s and 60s. Impelitari, Impelitari. Was, he was a, right, a write-in in candidate. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Wagner was a contemporary of Richard J. then, right? Yes, yeah, Bob okay. Wagner was mayor of New York okay. in the 50s and yeah. 60s. Now, does anyone recall... There's a, there's no. a cartoon of Bob Wagner with a, a, pie, ch- a pie graph... You know, and it's broken up into, and he and he's he's got a pointer at it, and they they put in the caption under it saying, "And this part is graft." <laughs> <laughs> what about um, Richard J? His first one victory was in 1955. Right. Right. This would have been his third one in 1963. Ben Adamowski ran against him. Remember yeah, Ben? Who sure. gave him his closest race? Yeah. And he did. He did all by himself with really no organization or backing. Yeah. Carried the white. Know, said huh? he carried the white vote in the city. Yeah. And the yeah. Polish folks. Uh, sure. I um, I know we were sitting in. I was a junior in high school, and we're sitting in uh, Father Hartman's class in physics. You know, I'm talking about Father Hartman. Remember, remember Joe Hartman? Was he, he was a he used he to work with the fire department as a chaplain, Father. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I got a story about he him later. Sort of but anyway, a he was a pseudo saying, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was an official. He, he never in his life saw someone do so well by himself with all the negativity in his camp- campaign. And he said, if this guy had any organization, he'd be mayor today, you know. Yeah. Of course, the Polish vote, you know, that, they yeah. very, that was very, uh, yeah. uh, people automatically thought, oh, you're r- 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 you must be Irish. And you. So this guy, well, I never really thought that way mm. myself. Well, like every, you every know, f- one of his knocks was the fact that he had been a Democrat his whole yeah, life. Yeah, right. And, and now, now yeah. all of a sudden yeah. he's a Republican. Yeah. And, you well, know. didn't Richard J. run for sheriff under the Republican ticket? His first no. No. state representative. State representative. State representative. State representative. And he no. was a Republican then. He, he was in that three ma- three-member district arrangement. There were already two Democrats. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah, yeah. so okay. he ran as the Republican so yeah. he could be elected. Did he get me- He was elected. As the Republican, yeah. when he got to Springfield, he immediately declared himself to be a Democrat, Democrat and, and yeah. voted with the Democrat. But he was elected How on the ballot as a Republican. Right. Yeah. Silly stuff. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Adamowski, he, a few other, he did a few other, he ran, remember, Ben's back, back Ben was ben. his, yeah. oh, yeah. was that for that same one or was another no. one? He ran for state's attorney, too, I think, then afterward. I think so. He was, yeah. he he was state's was he? attorney. He was yeah. state's yeah. attorney. Did he run again, yeah. though, for it? When he he was ran out? for other offices, but yeah. n- was unsuccessful after yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, I guess he's gone now, huh? Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Where'd he go? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Watching <laughs> over us. Yeah, he went yeah. to where all the good politicians. And uh, some of the other Kevin. people that uh, who did 
Here's a trip. Who, who did Daley defeat in night in the four years later in 1967? Was it? 1967. Who was the Republican candidate? 67. Was that Weiner? Weiner. Weiner. Oh, right. John Weiner. W a n e r. Didn't he have a refrigeration company? Or I something? think so. Yeah. 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 No one ever heard of him before. No. Or no. Since right. Or after. No. Yeah. John I'm Weiner. To think Weiner. of the company. Uh, I'm sure you've all watched the Cubs, and you see the guy with the pink hat in the green sweater, right behind the batter. He's sitting there. Oh, last year he started this, and and uh, uh, he's still there. He's you know. What is he doing? He's a is, he, is, he, is he time the guy. pitches or something? Well, no, he's a, a businessman, and and uh, he just. He, he gives these tic- these uh, tickets to the Cubs away, he's, you know. Oh, uh, yeah. And and I've often wondered what, you know, what business he was in. Yeah. And uh, they had a story about him the other day. Do you remember the wire works that a lot of firemen worked at? I think a lot of coppers, too. Where was it at? I, I think it was up in Evanston, up north somewhere. Yeah, no. And it was it was his name on the on the yeah uh, on the business, no, and I, I can't think of it. You. They had it the other day, yeah. but that that was that's his business. Yeah, mm. and yeah. and he would you know, I mean every game he's there with this yeah. pink hat on, you can't miss. It. Yeah, and and a green sweater or, right or, behind or home plate. Jack, right behind home plate. That's got to be an expensive seat. Oh, yeah. Cost a fortune. And he's got he's got tickets for all season, for this whole series, the whole bit. And he's got people that come around him. His wife is there sitting next to him. Yeah. And uh, what what was the name of that? Wireworks. No, I can't. Ah. Start, I think it starts with a K. The best seats I ever had, there was a uh, gal who worked at a local um, um, a liquor store and uh, uh, tavern called Campo Basso on Cicero Avenue. She had four tickets right behind the Cub dugout. Oh. Mm. You could put your, you know, your drink or whatever on, on the roof because they have oh, wow. a metal roof. Yeah, yeah. And uh, since she worked days quite a bit at a time, you know, it, mm. w- when she bought the tickets, she was... She was like a bartender at night, so she'd go to the game, you know. Sure, yeah. But she would sell the tickets at face value, you know. Hmm. And she said, she said one one of her regular customers was Jack Brickhouse. Oh. Hmm. And mm-hmm. you know he'd have somebody come in and he'd say, "I got some good seats for you." He'd call her up first. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I caught Holy a Mac. I caught a ball there. Uh, <laughs> there was hit, you know, and uh, into the stands and. Uh, but that was really uh but those seats that I've got at, for the bears uh which I you know inherited from my brother-in-law uh right now I don't think they're worth the, <laughs> the price <laughs> <laughs> that's on them but they are the best seats in the in the yeah. in the house why yeah. is that why is it worth uh why don't I say they're worth anything? Yeah. Well, because of what the Bears are doing now. Yeah, oh, the Bears. But that's, yeah. that's yeah. this year. Oh, yeah. I but know. the NFL, yeah. you know, the, the yeah. stupid policies yeah. they come up with. Yeah. And it's, uh, they're very expensive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, they come with a parking spot. Yeah. yeah. The whole bet and that. Very I'm, expensive. I'm, I'm trying to remember the, right now the name of Daly's last opponent. I think he was an educator in 71. And he gave Daly a little better oh, race than Weiner. Oh, was that that alderman uh, singer? Or, uh, oh, I don't know. Well, he still ran. Well, he did, died in. He died in seventy six. So he was yeah. yeah. two yeah. more times after sixty. Seventy five was probably his last. Yeah, yeah. Sixth hmm. term. Okay. Yeah, well, well, I know he, he ran right against. He was a, wasn't it Singer. He was the forty third ward alderman at the I time. No, the Singer wouldn't have been Maybe. a. Repu- he always had a Republican in yeah. those days. It would, they, yeah. So Singer would not have run as a Republican. No, that's no. Yeah, he because he would have been a Singer Democrat left, too. Left wing. It was it was a re, uh, an alderman though. Okay, yeah. Was, uh, uh, there was a guy named. Um, I don't remember. Yeah. Friedman ran against him. Yeah, that's was, right. Now that he yeah, married yeah. Jory Luloff. Remember? I think that's that might have right. been seventy one. Yeah, it was no, earlier. Uh, but I remember yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Women's Wear Daily broke the story that they were living together before there was like, oh, what a no. scandal, huh? Oh, no. From, from Women's Wear Daily yet. <laughs> Boy, you know, and they were, they were how old? You know, none of them, one of them was kids. 
him and there was let's see a guy who ran against named um, Timothy Sheehan was the one. Fifteen. That was, was that that Timothy Sheehan early on. Oh, was he the last one then? No, no, no. That was no. fifty nine. Was Sheehan oh. Tim Sheehan? He was his second. His first one was Robert Merriam. Yeah, that's right. Fifty five was the oh. first was Republican. The what was his name? Robert Merriam Bob was, Merriam. The, yeah. was the was Republican he? candidate in 55. Was he? Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then Tim Sheehan was 59. Mm-hmm. Ben Adamowski, 63. 63. Wayner, 67. Three. Friedman, 71. 75. I don't know. It was a, a very little known opponent, at the, yeah. even at the time, wow. I remember. I did but I can't. I can't even recall his name though. Yeah, hmm. I thought it was Singer. Maybe he. No, no, I don't, I don't think, so. think so. The Singer was like Singer was always a you know like a very left wing. He would never oh, been. Okay. He would S- never got the Republican. Was Singer nomination. and Jesse Jackson had the regular Democrats unseated? Was it in seventy? Oh, sorry, seventy two, maybe. Seventy two convention. Yeah, seventy two convention. Yeah. yeah. They had remember they had the oh, regulars the convention? on Seattle, yeah. yeah. oh. and then as Tom told the story before. He had sixty eight. They had seventy two and seventy six. Somebody's interviewing Richard J. He said, "Listen, you had the '68 convention, one-on-one yeah, on television, nation, you know, national hookup. You had the '72, you were unseated, and you like to say." And he says, "Excuse me, I gotta go get a sandwich." Walked <laughs> <So laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <Locked> away. <laughs> oh yeah, I lo- love stuff like that. You know, I gotta tell you, Mayor Daly was uh, just a lackluster uh, orator, except when he got mad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then he oh. was there. Yeah. I'm he the mayor explode. of everybody, That's of every right. race. I every don't country. care who they are. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. I don't yeah. care right. where they're yeah. from. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be law and order yeah. in the city of Chicago. <laughs> yeah, right. And he's all, I remember the one, he had a tirade once like that in the city council. Yes, yeah. And these yeah, aldermen several. are sitting there, they look they just <laughs> petrified. <laughs> <laughs> like he was afraid, they, <laughs> they were afraid he might have them all taken <laughs> out and <laughs> executed. That was Stalin, huh? Yeah. And when he finished, there's a pause for a few seconds. Like, they're not sure. <laughs> what are we supposed to And then they all stood up and applauded. <laughs> That's yeah. why he had a floor leader. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. 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 If he yeah. had to debate somebody at any time during his career, that would have been fun. Uh. My favorite memory is in 1962 when Congressman Sid Yates was the Democratic candidate against Everett McKinley Dirksen for the mm. Senate. And 62 was going to looking good for for the republicans of course off your election election. but dirksen was a legend i mean he's a republican leader in the senate and and (laughs) just just before the election there's the cuban missile crisis and president kennedy sends an air force jet to illinois to pick up edward everett dirksen and bring bring him him back back. to washington for the conference yeah i mean that cemented dirksen he was so important that the president had to have him in washington so naturally on election day Yates is defeated, and I'm listening to the radio. I'm in, I'm in my I'm a freshman at, in high school at Fenwick, and I, but I would listen to the ra- radio, the news, particularly the day after the election. I was already interested in politics, and I remember listening live on WIND when the re- the reporter had a hookup to the mayor's home out in you know on Low Avenue in Bridgeport, and they're waiting for the mayor to come out so that they can. And finally, you you hear the you hear the like the the garden gate closing, and they and Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor. Uh, uh, c- can you tell us what happened in the in the senatorial election yesterday? Yates lost. <laughs> yeah. well, well, we know he lost, Mr. Mayor, but but why do you think he lost? <laughs> he didn't get enough votes. <laughs> <laughs> but but, Mr. Mayor, do you have any insight as as to why he didn't get enough votes? Because not enough people voted for him. <laughs> <laughs> and then you hear the door slam <laughs> and the car take off. And he's, well, there, well, uh, well, Bill, you've just heard the mayor's analysis of <laughs> <Yeah>. his <laughs> 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 senatorial election. Well, I remember uh, when Byrne uh, defeated Belandic in the primary that year, uh, Scheller's Pump is right across the street, like from a place well known. I was yeah. in there last week with my cousin. Uh, from the 11th, 11th Ward headquarters, their yeah. Democratic Party. Yeah. And so Channel 2 was, John Drummond was in there looking for someone who was, are you a city worker, sir? The guy says real seriously, no, I'm an astronaut. <laughs> 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 real serious. <laughs> <laughs> Live television. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, I'm Lord an astronaut. <laughs> yeah, that was a, uh, that was a surprise there that uh, old man Schaller died. Yeah, yeah, well, it was about ninety something. So yeah, he was like yeah. ninety. Jack, Jack Shelley. I, I know to Jack talk. Jack I didn't yeah. talk to him. He was there every the, night. The sergeant's union was across the street there too. Not anymore. For a while. No, yeah, not anymore. anymore. Got that property over on uh, what else is it? Pershing. Yeah, Pershing and Ashland. Yeah, yeah, somewhere yeah. around. Yeah. yeah. 
But I, I, yeah, I used to go in there with Jim Cosgrove, and we'd, uh, mm -hmm. we'd have a, a sandwich. Uh, oh, uh, Sal uh, reminded me that that guy's name is Annexter. Who? Does that remind you Was of that anything? the guy? Annexter. Yeah. Annexter. Oh, what guy? Wire and... Yeah. Oh, oh. oh. Oh, huh? yeah. Annexter Corporation. Cable, yeah. Cable and wire. Yeah. yeah. Annexter Corporation sold um, uh, communication. I have. I had. I had an account with Annexter. Yeah. And that's where you bought telephone wire. Uh, well, yeah. that's that's the old man Annexter that sits there with his pink purple, oh. uh, pink hat on. Yeah. At all the ball games. That's yeah. Where he comes yeah. From. They they they, they sell they sell all the communications uh, needs you need yeah. jacks punch on blocks. Oh, they're all over the country. Yes, yeah. they are. Yeah. A very company, nice company. Yeah, his company was bought out or something, but they kept the division, and he hires handicapped people. Oh, yeah? Yeah, oh, okay. they, they, they have a factory around 2100 on Clyburn, you know, in the uh, oh. you know, south. Yeah, he used, to, he used to employ a lot of firemen to work there. Yeah, uh, right. Yeah. As long, I, I remember uh, Rudy uh, telling me that, that it was, because he asked me if I wanted a, a I said, yeah. no, I'm doing enough. Yeah. Uh, he says he's real good to us as long as we keep a certain amount of people there all the time. Yeah. Doesn't care who they are, just he wants yeah. those bodies. I, I know a, a, a fireman actually was on the patrols. His name was Bessler. I don't know if you remember him. He used to call him Swifty Bessler. Uh. Came on the fire department and then uh, he was working for Annexter. Oh, okay. And they approached him. Annexter approached him and said, We want to promote you to foreman. He left the, the job. Oh, to, okay. To, and went full time with Annexter. Oh, yeah. Channel 11 recently had a, uh, I don't know if it was part of a series or not, but all about former candidates. This particular one was about two hours long. It had about Goldwater and about Reagan, how the two campaigns were related. But uh, I heard this before, but uh, Barry Goldwater and John Kennedy were pretty close friends from being in the Senate that way, personally, you know. And Kennedy. And if they, if Goldwater got the nomination, they had planned that they would tour the country together, side by side, right. really? to debate issues. That's, that's right. That's right. That would have wow. been something to see, wouldn't it? Yeah. Goldwater was an amateur photographer. In mm -hmm. addition to being a pilot, I mean, Goldwater was a fascinating man in terms of just like Thomas Jefferson. He was in so many things. Mm -hmm. He had he had talent in many ways, and he did a he did a a, a, a professional style photograph of of John F. Kennedy when he was president. And the president, I remember Goldwater, Kennedy autographed it saying, to my good friend, Senator mm -hmm. Barry Goldwater, whom I will hope will continue on in the profession for which he has shown <laughs> so much yeah. talent, photography. <laughs> photography, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, he was, uh, I guess he, he got some prizes for his, his collections of photographs, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there's a story about him. I know a lot of people will jump to the conclusion that you're a Republican, you must not be for civil rights, you must not so-and-so, but he wasn't allowed to use a uh, particular uh, facility of a country club because his father was Jewish. Yeah, the name Goldwater. So yeah. he says, mm -hmm. well, I'm only half Jewish, can I play nine holes? <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's yeah. like the Groucho Marx one, can his daughter <laughs> swim in the pool? And it was a restricted hotel. By the way, everybody listening, even up to the 60s, this persisted. Some places would not let Jews use the place. No. Yeah. Not just, you know, people always think of the South and rules like that. We had a priest at St. Rita. He, he was from, from some town not far from Milwaukee. And he was telling us when he was growing up, this guy would have been my age or maybe a little younger. There were rules in the town that said, non-whites shall be out of town by sundown. Yeah. This is referring to the Indian reservation nearby. Mm -hmm. But anyway, can you imagine such a... Yeah. Uh, in, in America, in our, our uh, there was a mov movie made in the late '40s called *Gentleman's Agreement*, yeah. in which Gregory Peck right. portrays a reporter who is who is a Christian, but he portrays himself as a Jew right. and tests mm -hmm. hotels and things yeah. to see if they would yeah. would admit him. Mm -hmm. And and uh, I yeah. think it was a highly regarded film, yeah. a very highly regarded film. Well, you know, it, this, it's no different than when the Irish. No Irish want No Irish need apply. No Irish need apply. Well, I say, yeah, but that's yeah. those things persisted. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I know a friend of mine was saying there was something like even looking at an ad of a uh, for some hotel. There might be some little code down at the bottom was telling you, you know. Yeah. This we're talking don't, in don't 1950s even. Mm -hmm. What were you saying about Groucho Marx's daughter? His what daughter. <laughs> Uh, Belinda, I guess it was. Melinda. Melinda. Yeah, Melinda. Melinda. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they were at some hotel, and uh, someone told them, 
Jews weren't allowed to use the, the pool, and Groucho said, can she swim halfway submerged or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and which was, it was caustic. Yeah. yeah, there was humor, mm-hmm. but there's a certain amount of bitterness there too. How I'm could, sure. Yeah, how Groucho, could you how could you treat people like yeah. that? Groucho yeah. also said once that he would not want to be a member of any <laughs> club <laughs> that, that would have him as a member. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Looking back to '64, I don't think much of anything was said of Goldwater's Jewish ancestry. No, it was. No. Uh, and here, a, ca- a Catholic had been elected just four years before. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. So that was a sign of our country's yeah. maturity. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Well, his. But, his well, I was going to say, though, but, you know, there's a, a, a trend that's happening, and I've followed it. We have a, uh, a female mayor, but since then, we haven't even had a candidate that was no. female. Hmm. Uh, we have a black, we have a current black president of the United States. But in, in the recent uh, uh, campaign... There were only two people that were, you know, n- no Democrats. And we've had two black mayors. Yeah. No, it's, uh, and, you know, so you know, yeah. it seems like, you know, there is a tradition that's established, but then it stops right there. Yeah. We mm-hmm. might not have a black president well, for the next 30 years. Well, Kennedy was the first Catholic president. We've not had a Catholic no, president since. No, I was going to say. That's true. It's, it's yeah. amazing, true. really. Yeah. You know, yeah. You, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, the only two black running for president was Carson and uh, Herman Cain, you yeah. know, but mm-hmm. n- none of the Democrats, they weren't even thinking about another, no. you know, black, you know. But you hear that the, the black population in Chicago is de- declining quite quickly. Yeah. I think of all the ethnic groups, they're the ones that are leaving the city the yeah. most. It, you know, it's an interesting thing, too. They're saying that Chicago's population is decreasing. Yeah. But, you know, on the northwest side, they're putting up buildings all over the place. Literally all oh, over yeah. the place, the city. long yeah. railroad yeah. tracks. Yeah, yeah. you know, uh, anywhere the downtown. Look at uh, you know, look at what they're doing down there. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. All you, you see know. is uh, you know these yeah. construction cranes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't that many years ago, and I worked down there, South Loop, and near say River North, what they call now. There was nothing yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of those buildings were almost empty, old yeah. warehouses. Uh, Greek Town that oh, yeah. way, over that yeah. way. Now it's population living down there. Yeah. Quite a few students living downtown. My daughter wants to get an apartment, a condo down River River North or somewhere. Yeah. The one yeah. is her we birthday should. today, by the way. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Jennifer. To you. Can we sing to Jennifer? Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jennifer. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> this for the uh, the, the uh, Chicago uh, uh, media historian singers. Yeah, right. <laughs> and how old is Jennifer becoming? I'm not going to tell you. Oh, <laughs> well, she wouldn't want you to. Okay, <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> I'm no older than I was than when she was born, though. She's I 11. Yeah. There you go. That young. Yeah. That's young. Yeah. Very young. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I, guess, I, guess, I, guess, I must say, I might complain about them, but they're really good kids. Never been a problem at all. I mean... Have we you? moved to our new place. Maybe you've been a problem. Maybe you've Definitely. been a problem. Oh, aren't we always? Isn't the guy always wrong? What's no, wrong with you? I was never wrong. Our tax lady's got a, a printed paper on the real official looking. It says, if the guy's in the middle of a forest and there's no one else is around and he says something, is he still wrong? <laughs> 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 like the old thing about, you know, if, if, if a tree, tree falls, falls does it yeah. make a sound? Yeah. Well, the answer is no. No. Makes sound waves. Yeah. But you have to have a sound. You have to have something <laughs> to hear it, too, see? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. You can put that, take that one to the bank. Da, 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 da. <laughs> okay, some more people around. Got any more, any odd uh, candidates? Paul or? Powell, oh. one of the most oh, memorable yeah. Illinois yes. statesmen. When he died, it was said it would take a big man to fill his shoebox. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was the shoebox guy, right? <laughs> the Secretary of State. King, right? That's a great. No. Secretary, Secretary of State. State. And when he died, yeah. they found that his, his, his very cheap apartment yeah. was the, the closet Frugal. was filled with, sh- with shoe boxes crammed with cash. Yeah. Now, wait, was made, made out to him personally. Yeah. Well, he was Secretary of State of Illinois, yeah. not the yeah. U.S. Secretary. Now, this yeah. is roughly yeah. during oh, whose yeah. term? I mean, we I know that the Secretary of State of, of the country couldn't be crooked. And very yeah. In the 50s, early to mid I think he died in the mid-60s. Yeah. Yeah. Stratton's time, maybe? What, yeah. what about uh, yeah. Carpenter? Yeah. Was he also Secretary Charles of State? Charles F. Carpenter was a Republican Ooh. Secretary of State. Was yeah. he before yeah. Paul or after? Uh, before, I believe. Was he? Before, I believe. Would that be really Carpentier? Carpentier. Charles F. Carpentier. I remember someone at the time said that, that Paul Powell was a sort of fellow, the, the, the staff there, 
would huh? that that you know like for Christmas he'd he'd give them a half a dollar and wish them a, you know a Merry Christmas. Oh and, yeah. Hmm. And had these thousands and thousands of dollars in, and he drove a he drove like you know a, a fifty two <laughs> yeah, Chevy a beat up fifty two yeah. Chevy. Didn't he come <laughs> from a place called Vienna? Vienna, that's right, that's, that's right. right. Yeah, Vienna, Vienna, that's the way they pronounce S it. Seymour Simon was he also Secretary of State or was he a, a Seymour Simon was Seymour president Seymour of the Cook County Board. Board. Is that what he was? Yeah. 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 He, and he, he probably had other uh, probably no relation to Paul Simon, correct? Yes. No. Okay. Seymour oh, no. Simon was yeah. the was uh, the what about of the um, board. Dunn, George Dunn George was George W. Yeah. Dunn, president of the county board and yeah. and after Daly died he became chairman of the Cook County Democratic Sounds Central right. Committee. Yeah. Yeah. He was party chairman for a number of there years. There was a really I, uh, uh, powerful guy. Yeah. yeah. I quiet met, I met George him. George W. Dunn. And he wasn't real full of frivolous. He had a uh, uh, insurance business. They all do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's where the money came from. That's where the money yeah. came from. Yeah. 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 Talk, you talked about Walker before, uh, uh, and I worked at the racetrack with security. We were told that uh, uh, well, he was very, very close to Marge Everett, the owner of Arlington Park, oh. and we were told to uh, go overboard for for him whenever he came in. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Uh, you you can see what happened to him, and a lot of that came through Arlington Park Racetrack. Yeah. There's still a, a lot out there that he uh, gave to uh, Marge Everett. Oh. And it's still there, vacant, hmm. and right in a very, very big, high-class neighbor. Yeah. Hey, can yeah. we go back to Abraham Lincoln? He was a sure. Okay. Could. Okay. Now ready? for a brief intermission. Uh -oh. Sorry, go. You're listening to Meet the Chicago Historian. Well, friends, guess who's knocking on your front door? <laughs> yes, it's not that far away, and that'll be Old Man Winter. And, of course, when Old Man Winter arrives, he brings snow, hail, sleet, and all kinds of inclement weather. And now is the time for you to realize the fact that you have to check the roof siding and gutters on your home. You want to be sure that the roof, siding and gutters in your home are in good shape. You don't want mold, mildew in your attic or crawl space or drip, drip, drip on the ceilings in your rooms or have walls damaged by a leaky gutter or bad siding. So don't have double expense. Sooner or later, you're going to have to get it taken care of. So call Best Brothers Roofing, Siding, and Gutters at area code 630-616-1359. Mike Best will drive over in his shiny red truck with ladders on top and Best Brothers Roofing signs on the door. And Mike will look over your roof, siding, and gutters and give you an estimate and go from there. So once again, friends, don't have double expense. Be sure that the roof, siding, and gutters are on your home are in very good shape for when old man winter arrives, and that's not that far away. So call Best Brothers Roofing, Siding, and Gutters at area code 616-1359. That's area code 630 616 one three five nine. Call today for a free estimate. Best Brothers Roofing, Siding, and Gutters at area code 630-616-1359. Call today and don't wait. Now back to our show. Now here's my story about a guy. I was directing traffic. This had been around... Oh, 1978, I guess, at Dearborn and Randolph in they the morning. They had cars in those days? And I hear, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, real cars. They were <laughs> horse driven. Yeah. We had some of those, though. A couple were. It was a horse drawn. Coal driven. Car. Yeah, right. It was sold with coal driven <laughs> yeah. cars. Yeah. Anyway, it was wintry out, and I hear, good morning, officer. I said, 
What's the good word? <laughs> he chuckles and says, save your money. I turned out it was Richard Ogilvy, <laughs> the former oh, governor at the time. Governor. Now, what was his so. uh, background? What he, was he before that? Was oh. he? he had been sheriff of Cook County. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah I remember rare that. Republican, rare Republican was Republican. elected yeah. sheriff. And then yeah. he had served as president, another president of, of the, the Cook County Board. Yeah. yeah. He was elected president of the Cook County Board in, I think, in 64. And then in, in, in 66... No, he was elected in 66, and in 68, at two years into his term, he ran for governor of the state of he Illinois and was elected governor in 68, yeah. same year as Nixon was elected president. Mm -hmm. A lot of Republicans were very upset with Ogilvy because they felt for the first time in, in memory, a Republican is president of the Cook County Board. They thought he could have established something yeah. of a Republican beachhead yeah. and, and develop some patronage yeah. and some... Yeah. And he gave it up. Well, and, and in yeah, terms of his own yeah. career, he, had, he took the option. You know, he yeah. had to strike when he ironed his hat. Mm -hmm. But I remember a lot of Republicans were very upset that he gave up, and, and, and actually Democrats regained the, the presidency of the county yeah. board. And he went on to be governor of Illinois, passed the state income tax, yeah. State yeah. Income. Yeah. and was and, and, out and in knew that he was going to four yeah. years later. Yeah. Now, was yeah. he in a war hero or something? Yeah, he had, he, he had a certain he, disfigurement. He, yeah. He'd been a tank, yeah. Been a yeah. tank, commander, tank commander in Europe in World War II. He had had a good portion of his face shot off in World yeah. War II, which gave him a very stern... Yeah. His face yeah. had been reconstructed. He couldn't, yeah. So he had a very stern appearance. I think him. he was in Patton's army. About, I'm almost yeah, third, yeah. yeah. He was a tank officer under Patton. You, you know where his name is uh, remembered is the... Uh, Railroad station, yeah, railroad known station. as the yeah. Ogilvy. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what the connection there was, but uh, he was. Yeah, and he was instrumental in in the early days of the RTA, the establishment of oh, the RTA. Oh yeah, yeah. I think that would may have been. He probably it was a all right guy. He seemed know. like it to me. And you know what happened? You he know, like I say, he put. He came into office. The state has this huge deficit, and he felt there's no way he, he, there's no way they're going to balance the budget without a tax increase. So he, inst he institutes the yeah. Illinois state income tax. Mm -hmm. In four years later, when he runs for re-election in 1972, Richard Nixon carries the state by a million votes. He loses it. Chuck Percy is running for senator. He carries the state by a million votes. And Bill Scott is running for attorney general beneath no him yeah. and carries the state by a million votes. But he doesn't. And Ogilvy loses, loses by, I don't know how many hundred thousand. He didn't lose it by a million votes, I don't yeah. think. But he, so, I mean, you, people... What they the remember moral is people found his name Man. on the ballot yeah. and voted against him because yeah. of the income. Now, who did he lose to in 72? To, uh... Oh, what's that? 72, would have, I believe, would have been Dan Walker. Could be. I yeah. think Walker was the one who... I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. I think Walker defeated him. Well, that was a good move. I think the, the, the present president of the Cook County Board uh, may find something like that, too. Yeah, with the taxes, with the taxes yeah, the sugar tax, tax etc. But you know yeah. the interesting thing is that the next governor and every successive governor kept that income tax. Yeah, oh yeah. They didn't. They didn't repeal it. No, they, you know, the, the they were he was elected would, because would of it, but he but didn't repeal it. My civics class said the governor didn't pass all that legislation through the pass. two houses, did he? Well, I'm sorry. Wasn't it the state senators oh, sure. and the? Oh, oh, oh sure, it had it had, passed. it had to be passed, but I People think, think it, it was way, passed. I think basically with Democratic votes, he didn't. Yeah, it wasn't he, he it wasn't, initiated it. His Republicans were not voting for now, that tax. Anymore. Since the state and I guess most states, or all, all states, and the country, the nation has a bicameral right. legislature. So that mean they have one dromedary and one Bactrian, or what <laughs> oh is yeah, that? right. Da -da 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 Boom. Except, well, Nebraska. Them in Except Nebraska, Nebraska, which has a unicameral. Do they? Yeah, yeah, Nebraska has Always a one-chamber legislature, and the members of it are called senators. But okay. it's not called the Senate. It's just called, I think, hmm. I'm not sure what it's called, but, but they are called senators. What about Louisiana? Like, a lot of their things are more from the French. You know, the parishes, not yeah, counties. They have par parishes, parishes yeah. rather than counties. Same thing, though. Yeah, but I, mean, yeah. and I believe they have, they have uh, uh, French-style law. They have... Uh, Yes. They don't have common law. They don't have the English style common law no, that we have. That's interesting. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, I don't quote it, but I believe Louisiana still has the Napoleonic, where they have the code of Whoa. laws that that govern everything, and they're not based on as we are on English common law <laughs> traditions. And the, mm. and and the French law. And, and that, now yeah. they're all underwater. Yeah, right. And they also have a sky. They have, you know, I think one of the very few skyscraper state capitals, Huey Long. Their state capital is not a domed building oh, the way most oh, state capitals. Yeah. It's a skyscraper. He yeah. wanted something modern, yeah. and, and uh, yeah. that's where he was, and also, he was killed. And the French law, 
you have to prove yourself innocent. You're not proven guilty. <laughs> Is that correct? <laughs> Right? You're in it, you're, yeah, the, the, you're, and you're and guilty until proven innocent. And why why are there so many tree-lined roads in France? Because the German army likes to march in the shade. Correct. <laughs> you can start for wow. that. Wow. Very good. Listen, I heard all of those. I spent yeah. two years over there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a French tank. It's got one forward and three reverses on it. But you have to remember, you know, again, in their defense, you have to remember that under Napoleon, the French... Yeah cleaned house with yeah. the Prussians and every and, and they did under Louis the Fourteenth or some. So the French have had their innings too and they and they were on the winning side in the First World War as well. So you know the no the myth of France yeah. as being the perennial loser mm -hmm. is a little bit exaggerated. They were defeated in World War II I know. but I but they but they had a pretty distinguished military record yeah. before that. You know, Sometimes the, the Italians are made more fun of as military yeah. Yeah. geniuses. Yeah. You, you know, there's... The, and even they could point to Julius Caesar. Oh, you you know. going back far enough. Yeah. Yeah, it was like uh, the three thinnest books in the world. It's an Irish cookbook, Italian war heroes, and Jewish business ethics. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say... Uh, it's enough to put us off the air. Yeah, yeah, right. Oh, come on. Some of my best Jews are friends. <laughs> Maybe yeah. someday we could do a program on ethnic stereotypes. Oh. And yeah. I don't know. I think it could be done scholarly. What is, uh, <laughs> where does an Irish family go on uh, vacation? To yes. a different bar. Boom. Let's see what that. What do you call I would love to get Rabbi Moshe Wolf down here. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, was he yeah. good with this? Oh, is he? Oh. Get, give him a, only met him give him a call. Yeah. 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 He's the chaplain of the. Uh, the police department? Fire department, police yeah, department, police. FBI, Does Secret he? Service. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He stays great busy. guy, great guy. Y yeah. You remember one of his great lines? He and his son were mugged uh, while they were going to um, services, religious services. It's like a Friday night or something, yeah. you know. And uh, they were able to catch the mugger, you know. And he says, what a dummy, he says. I'm going to shul or something. He said, I don't, I can't carry any money. <laughs> He's mm. robbing me. I don't have anything to give him, you know, so. so. He, and he's a big guy. Yeah. He is, yeah. Oh, he's, he's a big, yeah. and he's very, very he's, he's uh, articulate. astute with uh, judo and jujitsu. Mm. Oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. He's, he's don't quite mess a with him, huh? Yeah. yeah. So anyway, that makes me think of this, uh, this old Jewish guy every, <laughs> every week. At the services, he stays real late after everyone's gone. He's praying, Lord, please, Lord, please let me win the lottery. I wish to win the lottery. Please, Lord, please. Goes out for months on end. Finally, one evening, Saturday, I guess, everyone's gone. The light comes through the ceiling and goes, Max, Max, got to work with me on this one. Buy a ticket. <laughs> 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 no, that, and that kind of joke is harmless, isn't it? I don't yeah, think that's yeah, that. absolutely. What about the, uh, what, what do you call an Italian who has one arm shorter than the other? It's a speech impediment, you know. So. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I told the Irish one already. Yeah. Good program. Wow. Welcome to the ethnic hour, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. Right. How do we get from, from jokes to that? We huh? insult everyone. <laughs> <laughs> no one has escaped. We used to have a, a kid I went to high school with. He was Polish, and he would... <laughs> and uh, we were we both worked at Central Steel, doc guys, you know. And he would come over in front of me. I guess it's supposed to make me feel bad. Every Polish joke he heard, he turned and made an Irish joke. He looked right at me like it was supposed to hurt me. I don't know. He's getting back for all of them. Ridiculous. <laughs> you know, you you mentioned uh, the Dutch and the English. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I heard, I don't know if it's true or not, that the Russians were the people that pushed the Polish jokes because they had you know friction there. In Poland, you sure. know. So, sure. So, uh, you, know, you know, because you remember, you know, all there was a uh, beauty contest in Warsaw. There were no winners, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, after uh, the war, the the, the Russians <laughs> built a skyscraper. Stalin built this skyscraper in the center of Warsaw, called I think the Palace of Culture. Oh. And it's you know it's just it's it was Stalin's favorite form of architecture, which is you know horrendously ugly. Mm -hmm. And the story amongst the Poles was, where do you get the, the finest view of Warsaw? Say, oh, from the top of the Palace of Culture. Why is that? Because from there, you don't see the Palace of Culture. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Well, I know that World War II was the, the uh, by the way, that wouldn't be true about the uh, no winners in the beauty, Polish girls beauty <laughs> yeah. contest. He was just, 
Mm. Anyway. Well, uh, th this was the type I know. of, you know, you know. No, I know, but I'm just saying, when, yeah. I, when, when, firsthand, you know. And yeah. you know what really looks good? A lot of neighborhoods, they had Mexicans and Polish, and the girls that come out of those those unions, wow. Wow. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. But anyway, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what was I saying? Oh, in Poland, they refer to World War II as the war they lost mm -hmm. twice. Yeah. Being that, you know, yeah. the Germans, yeah. and then, the, yeah. then, yeah. then yeah. Joe yeah. Stalin, yeah. He's in yeah. our friend. Yeah. yeah. Jo joke was, you know, in, in more recent times, you know, if you ask a, a Polish officer, if Poland were invaded simultaneously by the Germans and the Russians, who would you shoot first? Oh, we would shoot the Germans first. Business before pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I know I was, well, the, the restaurant we go to on uh, Sundays often, Peaches and Pears on Archer near us, uh, they run, Polish people own it, you know, Polish Americans own it. Yeah. And a young girl in there, she was going to school, and I said something about Putin, and I said, why does he always got this pissed off look on his face? And she says, don't all Russians? <laughs> yeah, she <laughs> says to a young Polish kid. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of Putin, Putin on the Ritz, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's come on. We got to get some more. Any more election stuff? Any more election? You were going to talk about Abraham Lincoln. You oh, yeah, I was going to talk about. Well, yeah. very briefly, um, <laughs> was um, uh, you were mentioning the uh, uh, well, the state of Illinois. Uh, well, Stephen Douglas, you know, was our senator. Lived in Chicago around 30, you know, where he's buried, 35th in Cottage Grove. He gets a land grant for trackage from Chicago to Cairo, Illinois, which is about 400 miles. Yeah. So Paul du uh, Douglas, Stephen Douglas, Stephen, Stephen Douglas, Douglas. Yeah, yeah. Stephen Douglas. Right. So Illinois Central, correct? I Illinois, yeah, for the Illinois Central Railroad, they could have never, they n never could have accumulated enough money to buy all that land. Yeah. So he, they get a, he give him a land grant. Anyway, so the state, in issuing a charter, says, how are we going to tax them? Because this, the trackage is going to go through many, many, uh, you know, townships, small towns, big cities, you know, Springfield, whatever. So they said, the Illinois Central will pay 7% of their gross income to the state and to no one else. Well, a few years later, someone sends them a tax bill. So the Illinois Central says, you know, no matter which way this goes, it's going to wind up in the Supreme Court, Illinois Supreme Court. Let's get a lawyer from Springfield to represent Lincoln. us. So they get Abraham Lincoln. Mm -hmm. So he sort of talks. Was he representing the railroad? He's representing the uh, railroad, no. yeah. The biggest case he ever handled. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. it was, yeah. And uh, anyway, I think he talks the Supreme Court into not accepting it. Yeah. So and so it went to a lower ruling, which was in favor of Illinois Central. He then sends a bill for five thousand dollars to the Illinois Central Railroad. They refuse to pay it. Hmm. So he sues the Illinois Central Railroad to get his fee. So he gets what do they call it? A, a, a notice of attachment or something. Probably, from yeah. a judge mm, yeah. sounds right and he can he can attach property you know what he attaches a train <laughs> he gets a train locomotive coaches on oh, the track mainline track in the Springfield sheriff of Sangamon County says to the both the engineer and conductor can't move the train <laughs> now he's got the, <laughs> he's got the railroad tied up so they eventually, I don't know if they had a telegraph then or whatever, but they... Oh, yeah. Oh, they would have oh yeah. Yeah. They yeah. did, yeah. 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 Eventually, yeah. That the conductor that, 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 says, that, that, I'll talk to my <laughs> boss. The boss says, tell Lincoln, we'll, you know, release the train. We'll pay him a fee. And he got a $5,000. Yeah. That's true. Biggest fee that he ever collected. Mm -hmm. yeah. What was right? $5,000? What would that be he today? Uh, what would that be today? How much? Oh, oh God, I don't know. Yeah. $50 million. You know that uh, the same thing happened up in uh, in Baraboo where the the gambling uh, casino is, oh. and uh, the parking lot was owned by a farmer. They just rented it, oh. and uh, it was owned by a farmer. Well, they hadn't paid this farmer their his rental fee for quite some time, and I was going somewhere and I went by it and I thought 
what the heck are all of those big concrete, uh, <laughs> uh, whatever you call them, blockades uh, yeah. uh, doing in that parking lot, and, and uh, somebody must be doing some yeah, doing some construction, heavy construction work or whatever. Some. And uh, the next place I stopped at, I said, what's going on down there? He says, they didn't pay the farmer so-and-so uh, his fee, so he's blocking off his part of the yeah. of the parking lot. Yeah. Well, it only lasted about two hours. <laughs> yeah, right. and, <laughs> and they disappeared right away. So those dumb farmers like Lincoln. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, they're not. They, they know yeah. where their butter is yeah, uh, yeah. tied on. Yeah. Well, someone asked Lincoln how long a man's leg should be, and he said long enough to reach the ground. He's <laughs> got <laughs> very long-legged, correct? No? He he must have, uh, and, and I guess he wrote his own scripts and everything, you know, like oh, the sure. Gettysburg yeah. Address. Sure. Gettysburg Address, sure. And, uh, he used to drive his, his, his uh, partner, Herndon, he used to drive him nuts because Lincoln would stretch out they had, on, in their office, they had a little cot, and he would get the newspaper, and he'd read the newspaper out loud. <laughs> And not just in a soft way, and, and in Washington, seven, and, and Turnin's at the desk trying to get He's some work. Get some work done. <laughs> and there's Lincoln reading the newspaper out loud. There's a, there's a new uh, program on TV, and I don't remember what the channel is or time or date and that, but it's called, I think it's Timeline. Right. Is it, do you have you seen a rich? It's about history the way it was before. The first no. program was about the Hindenburg, right. oh. and and this last mm. one was about the assassination of Lincoln. Oh really? Lincoln. Yeah, I missed yeah. that. And, oh, I was gone. That and, day. Yeah, I and both. it's uh, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, you well, know, it's all uh, BS and and yeah. you know yeah. the way they did it, but it's really interesting. Yeah. And of course, they got a whole storyline around it yeah. uh, you know love story and all of yeah. this but, yeah. but it's it's the, interesting yeah. the very fact that we remember all those you know the hindenburg no one will ever forget it oh, you know, yeah. you know. Oh, it's a good the thing they bring this Herb out Morrison, was it? Herb so Herb that these Herb kids Morrison. now know what wls radio yeah yeah oh the humanity yeah. Yeah. This was is name Morrison? Oh, yeah. some yeah. people Herb walked away without a scratch yeah yeah a lot of people didn't a lot of people in terms of numbers, there, I mean, I think there were 37 people killed. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, not, it's, small. it's yeah. nothing yeah. like the Titanic, no. but it's just, no. it's the drama. The it's spectacular. The, the yeah. newsreel, the, the fact fire. that it's on film, yeah. this huge, this huge so Zeppelin all of a sudden, exploding <coughs> yeah. and burning. What was the uh, uh, hydrogen? Yeah, it's filled right? with hydrogen. Yeah. The United yeah. States would not, yeah. would not, we're the only country in the world that possesses helium, helium. and we wouldn't export it to the, to the Germans. Yeah. Right. It was. Uh, it's. It's amazing in a way uh, that the world hasn't gone back to lighter than air. Lighter than air. They talk or, about it. There's yeah. always articles. Well, they and do. They, they are. They are yeah. coming back yeah. with some yeah. uh, around. Uh, every yeah. so often you see that. But, yeah. but very small. Not as passive scale. Yeah. But it makes yeah. for yeah. slow yeah. transportation. Yeah. 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 I, mean, I mean the Goodyear blimp. You know. At <laughs> yeah. At the football games or something. That's about it, right? And and we had the, the the Goodyear blimp crash in the loop, you know, the yep. the very was first that, one. Uh, first National Bank or C e Continental um, Bank. Continental, I think. Yeah, it was, Continental. Yeah. Was, yeah. Jackson. The big bank with the little bank inside. Nineteen. Big bank. Nineteen. Nineteen. Yeah. yeah. Was that a Goodyear blimp? No, I don't think. Yeah, no. it was. Really? Yeah, yeah it, it was, was that far first. back. Wow. It was the first yeah. Goodyear blimp? Took you know, you look at the size too. A Navy blimp next to the. There was a photo next to the uh, Hindenburg. Holy cow, they were huge. Oh, yeah. There is, there is a fascinating... Which was huge? The Hindenburg. The, oh, the Hindenburg. The Hindenburg. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There is a fascinating black and white movie called Dirigible that I saw a year or so ago. They had on one of the movie channels. Made about 1934. It's an early, you know, oh, early man. black and white talkie film. Oh. And it's about Navy, it's about the, you know, the Navy officers serving in the lighter than air service. And there's one scene there where they've got one of one of the, the Navy dirigibles, I think it was the Los Angeles. Could it, they had the Akron, the Macon, and the Los, Los Angeles. Angeles yeah. And there are blimps and balloons all together, like a flip. I've never seen this. You never see several together. Mm -hmm. And there's, so there's this huge Zeppelin and two or three Navy blimps escorting it. Mm. I mean, it just, if you're interested in that sort of thing, it's, yeah, a, it's a fast I to am. see. And a couple of, you know, regular hot air balloons 
and they're conducting like navy maneuvers at this time. Yeah. It's and then they go on. They go, the story is they go on an expedition to the Antarctic, oh. and it crashes. If you ever have a chance to see it, it's a very interesting picture. Bolton. I want to give you my favorite Lincoln story. Yeah. He's he's defending a woman who's accused of murdering her husband, and the, I do this as Lincoln. The case looked powerful against her, so I asked if I could have a conference with my with my client. And the judge agreed to it. And in those days, we didn't have any fancy conference rooms. You just went outside and had your conference under the tree. So we went outside and talked. And then the court came in session. And the judge was there. And the prosecutor was there. And I was there. But the woman, she was nowhere to be found. So the prosecutor stood up and started a ranting and a raving, saying, Your Honor, Attorney Lincoln has done something dastardly. He has spirited his client away from the jurisdiction of this court. And I said, Your Honor, that is not true. That is absolutely not true. While we were out there, my client told me that she was thirsty. And I told her that I had heard there was some mighty fine water down in Tennessee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, she was never seen again in those parts. Oh, true story? True story. Yeah, true story. I heard that one. Yeah. Yeah. I know he's been portrayed uh, by many people. And uh, in uh, Young Mr. Lincoln, it was Henry Fonda, remember? Well, he's got the one Ward Bond on on the stand. And the one, uh, and he, That's some kind of killing, he's trying to prove something. And Ward Bond's name was J. Palmer Cass. <laughs> and he says, uh, and what is it, uh, does your J stand for? He says, John. He says, well, I prefer calling you Jack Cass. <laughs> so the whole courtroom laughs. And laughs. <laughs> Ten minutes later, the judge goes, oh, that's a pretty good one. <laughs> <laughs> I just got that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, was, uh, that is a true story, too. Is he, it? He, yeah, pro he, proved, he proved that the witness who claimed that he saw oh, yeah. the murder or the, or the assault being committed in the moonlight he proved with the with the almanac Farmer's that there almanac. was no moon that was night. Moon, it was yeah. a moonless night, and this guy's whole testimony was that he could see it clearly at yeah. ten o'clock at night because of the moon shining. Yeah, in. yeah, that's right. Oh yeah, he was the almanac. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's his name? Did him too in uh, Abe Ray Lincoln, Ray Illinois. Raymond, Raymond Massey. Raymond Massey, Massey, yeah, Massey. a Canadian, by the way. Yeah. 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 Uh, but he was Massey that was Massey. done from a, a stage play originally. That's done. I believe. That's called. Uh, uh, Abe Lincoln in Illinois. Yeah, yeah Abe right. Lincoln in Illinois. That's what you just said. young Mr. Lincoln. Was yeah, the other one? Yeah. The one Around Lincoln. the same time. Massey uh. redid it. Redid it on television in the 1950s. What? And it ends with Massey leaving Springfield to go yeah, to Washington. To to Washington. And yeah. the story is the true story. Ted Knight, Ted Baxter wow. from yeah. Mary yeah. Tyler Moore Show, was an extra in the in this TV. And it's live TV, of course. Mm -hmm. And as the train is, is pulling away, everybody is shouting, Goodbye, Mr. Lincoln. And Ted Knight, forgetting himself, says, Goodbye, Mr. Massey. Goodbye, Mr. Massey. <laughs> well, that's like Burt Reynolds, when his early, early days, when he did live television, like Playhouse 90 <coughs> or one of those, he had a part on a, uh, whatever the play was, it was supposed to be a bad fire. And a reporter comes along to ask the fire chief, who was Paul Ford. Remember Paul Ford? Oh, yeah. sure. Colonel He's Hall on the... Uh, yeah, sure. He says, he's supposed to say, any survivor says, yeah, this man over here, he can tell you. And it was Burt Reynolds, you know. So the reporter goes and <laughs> says to him, any survivors? He goes, no, no. He <laughs> 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 didn't get to talk on it. <laughs> so. And Walter oh, Houston yeah. played Lincoln in an early 30s talkie by E.W. Oh, e. yeah. Griffith. 19, oh, yeah. Very oh. static movie by today's 1930. standards. 1930. Abraham Lincoln, wasn't oh, the name of Early talkies, yeah. just, right. I think the name was just Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. Was the name of the How about in uh, uh, Birth of a Nation, Joseph Teesbury was... Joseph, remember Joseph Teesbury? Yeah. No. A lot of good movies. <laughs> what year was a Birth of a Nation? 19... Henry B. Walthall was the star. I, I think 1915. Was, yeah. yeah, 1915. Yeah. He was uh, one of the, was he the plantation owner, becomes the officer? and all Walt Dahl, yeah. 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 Now, there's a picture okay. that no one will give a fair chance to, guess, because, oh, it's all about the slavery and the reconstruction. But there was a lot of true true occurrences were portrayed in there of what happened with this construction. I mean, you, if, you were, if you held arms or against, in, in the war uh, with the South, you couldn't uh, hold the elected office, and they had, yeah. you know, Whatever, and there were people in the North who were going to punish the South for it. They said, and even there's a quote in the picture 
when Lincoln gets killed, was it Harry B. Walthall? Walthall, He yeah. says, the South has lost its greatest friend because yeah. Lincoln wanted just to go back. He wanted a yeah. Yeah. Lincoln was glad. He wanted the Union restored yeah. Yeah. and as little, no, as no little reprisals, commotion no, as possible. Yeah. Yeah. But there were people like that. What was the one senator's name? Um, Sumner? I don't know who he was. It was portrayed in also in that, um, I think, What's his name? Played him in the more recent Abraham yeah, Lincoln Charles movie. Charles Sumner from Massachusetts. Was it Sumner? I think so. Yeah. Okay, it was uh, might have been, might have used a fictional name in the the old one, hmm. but um, they call them the radical Republicans, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. They wanted was, they wanted yeah. to really hammer. Yeah. What's his name? Yeah. What's his yeah. name? Jones. <laughs> he was uh, Al Gore's roommate in college. What's that Jones's name? That actor. Jones. You know about. No. I can't think of his name now. Yeah. But he he portrayed that character in. Uh, Oh, oh shoot! In the in the new, the the new I'll probably think of it tonight when I'm falling asleep. Absolutely, you will. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a new movie out now. Uh, I guess it's coming out shortly. I don't know if it's on TV or or in the show. Uh, Killing Reagan. So yeah, yeah. it was on last night in the National Geographic. Oh, yeah. it's on Bill oh, O'Reilly's okay. book. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Bill O'Reilly's yeah. book. Yeah. yeah. So I can imagine the rest of the movie be coming Lincoln up too. Uh, Reagan was but uh, what, killed, what I've yeah. seen that they've done from his books. They're not like what you would call a docudrama today. Very much yeah. like, yeah. Uh, yeah. as much as close as they can to represent what happened. And uh, they show quotes, what's actual from the letter or something someone right. said. Yeah. They're, inter they're interesting. Yeah. The, 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 yeah. The, the, oh, yeah. the book about Reagan has caused a lot of controversy, particularly amongst men that, uh, who served with Reagan, because apparently O'Reilly claims that Reagan was already showing the signs of Alzheimer's when he was president. Right. It seems to me that the, that's the premise that Reagan was beginning to lose it, and, and yep. this has been adamantly denied by men that, mm -hmm. that worked with him at that time. That this yeah. is that's a slur on Reagan yeah. to suggest that his mind was going while he was still in the White House. Yeah. Well, he came back to, to make that speech at the Republican convention years after he was, and he was 100 percent Reagan yeah. there. There was yeah. no doubt about yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, I just saw that too. As I said before, uh, one program was about different contenders over the years and this one was about Goldwater and Reagan and how one campaign led to the other and I just you know where are people like that today you know yeah, yeah. well we're getting to the end of the we program sure here, are. Guys. Yeah. Uh, before we go our next I program is November 21st okay and what about have one more thing Halloween. before we go one more uh, November 10th we have a no November 10th anybody that's uh, interested they're having a memorial uh, for my son John right, yes. in the uh, Tasca Firehouse yeah. uh, on Irving Park Road and this will be a, a memorial plaque. This is where he was uh, slain hmm. and uh, everybody as a state trooper. Uh, uh, yes. Just line of duty. Right. Line of duty. Line yeah. of duty death and uh, uh, there'll be refreshments and so forth. They're doing one great job. They're, uh, they're, the, they're, the dedicating, are, the they're dedicating the plaque, and that area will be dedicated uh, uh, around there. Around the interchange between 290 and, and 355. Yeah. Right. So what right. time is that? 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Get 10 the word out. Sure. Before we go, one more thing. Thanks oh. to Bill Kugelman. Thank yep. you, Bill. John Oskoshelko. Rich Announcer, Lang. I know your name. Announcer, Rich Lang. Uh -huh. Tom McKenna, who had a cutout early. He's getting yeah. docked for that now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, what's yeah. your name again? Ken Little? Yeah. Little Ken? Little Ken. Uh, little, 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 Ken. John little, yeah, little John Little? Little John Little. <coughs> and I uh, thank myself. We want to thank our peanut gallery. Thank yourself, yeah. our audience. Yeah. Thanks to John De John DeVita. And thanks, wherever you are, Joe Gentile, for leading us We're to this. He's before listening. We, He's before listening. we go, before we go, remember, history is much more than a book you keep on the shelf. Yes, sir. Done. Happy Halloween. Done. We and wish to thank you, Kevin of Jack FM, WRHS 89.7 FM, for broadcasting our shows over the Ridgewood Radio Network. Recordings of previous Meet the Chicago Historians programs are available for your listening pleasure via the Internet at www.windycityhometown.com. We want to thank especially the executive producer of Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network, John Seconda. On behalf of everyone associated with our Historians program, we thank you for listening. This is your announcer, Rich Lang. So long until next month.
You have been listening to Meet Your Chicago Historians from the John DeVita Broadcast Center on the Wimney City Hometown Entertainment Network on Monday, October the 17th, the year 2016. This broadcast was directed, was produced by Jack Ryan, directed by John DeVita, and a special thanks to our executive producer of Wimney City Hometown Entertainment Network, Mr. John Chaconda. Today's program was pre-recorded on Monday, October the 17th, the year 2016. Until next time, thanks for listening and be safe.